Good evening, everyone. We're going to call our meeting to order at uh, two minutes after five. And uh, for simplicity's sake, it would be great if our guests could introduce themselves. And at the same time, after that, we will all introduce ourselves just so everybody knows who everybody is. How about that? So however you want to do it. I'll start. My name is Kristen Hayes. I'm a Middlesex resident. OK. I'm Marianne Watt, and I am a property owner in Middlesex. I'm Barb Dupere. I'm a property owner in Putnamville. Hi, I'm Olivia Dupere. I'm a daughter. I grew up in Putnamville since I was three years old. Okay. I'm Kevin Thompson. I live in Putnamville. I'll be born, live in Putnamville. What's your first name? I'll be born. I'll be born. Carol Maloney, I live in Putnamville. Karen Gannett, I live in Putnamville. Sherry Page, I live in Putnamville. Jane Tucker, I live in Putnamville. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> My bet. <laughs> yep. Kim. And Kimberly Jessup, I serve as the state rep for Middlesex East Mount Pillar. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Merriman, I'm the town clerk as select board assistant. Uh, Liz Sharp, select board member. Peter Hood, select board member and chairman. Dorinda Crow, town treasurer. Steve Martin, select board. Phil Hayek, select board. Mary Skinner, select board. So, looks like this is a big night for Putnamville. Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, hello. A few more. <laughs> yes. Good evening. Putnamville. Could you guys uh, sign it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll sign it. So, do you just you introduce yourself? Myself, right yeah. here. Yeah. 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 I'm John Skates. Yeah. I'm with Casella Waste. Mm -hmm. So are, are, you, are you here on the Putnamville issue? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Oh, Perfect. And the other two? Oh, yeah, I'm Seth Lipschitz from Putnamville. And Joanne Mancroft, Putnamville. Okay. Great. <laughs> Thank you one and all. If only all of our meetings were this well attended. <laughs> so the first item on our agenda, propitiously enough, so you don't have to listen to the rest of our exciting business, is to consider purchasing solar-powered radar signs for Vermont Route 12 to reduce speeding action possible. So do you have someone from your group who is going to present this proposal? Yeah, Albie and I actually probably yeah, together ahead. can. Yes, can okay, that'd bit. be great. Thank you. So we had approached the select board a while back regarding the speed coming into Putnamville and then out of Putnamville being really dangerous. We'd asked for the speed assessment to be done. Um, it was completed over the summer, and we met with Vermont Transportation Traffic Committee on Wednesday to kind of review those results. What they determined is that they know that it is a major issue and that it is a high priority and something that they know to be um, ongoing and getting consistent worse, I think, as traffic continues to increase through the area. Um, they've determined originally, when Albie and I had presented with them, we were asking them to lower the speed limit as well as address some of the signage and the visibility concerns. Um, they had relayed that they were unable to drop it lower than the 35 because, number one, they did not think that it was going to be adhered to, um, so they did not think that it would be worthwhile to change it if people were not actually going to slow down. Um, and then the other piece is the Vermont legislation that requires that this, the miles per hour cannot drop more than 15 miles per hour in a given zone. There has to be some sort of a transitionary Step period. Process. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There was. They determined that there wasn't the sight lines in the area along that stretch that they could do that where it made sense. They felt um, so. They did agree to bump the area of the 35 out on either end. So they're going to make it a wider area and they're going to move those signs back and add some additional like speed warning signs to kind of transition and warn speeders coming in that it's going to drop down to the 35 and increase the area. Um, as far as signage, they did recently do a signage project through the Putnamville stretch there. Um, there are two uh, school bus signs that basically they just took the old signs down and they just put a replacement back up. So it's nice. They're nice and bright and yellow and new, but they're the exact same signs. And they're um, in the same place? They're in the exact exact same place, yes. Um, when we sat down with them, you know, one of the concerns, of course, is enforcement in this area. We've had a lot of 
we have near misses, I think, all the time. I think that most of the residents here can probably speak to the safety of pulling in and out of our driveways on a regular daily basis. Um, you know, on a regular basis, I am taking my life and my kids' hand, lives in our hands as we're pulling in and out of there. Um, there's just no sight lines. So, you know, in addition to the residences, we also have three business owners that are in that stretch, and we have a lot of traffic that's coming in and out. Um, last week specifically, there were and was a really near miss accident on Friday that involved one of the Casella waste trucks that was coming through, which is a regular occurrence, you know, similar to the buses. We do have the garbage and different kind of um, landscapers, plowing people that are also coming through to help with residences. And they're just, there's no safe way for them to access our properties, especially when people are going, oftentimes increasing of over 50, 55, or 60 miles an hour through that stretch. It's really, really dangerous. Um, on Tuesday of last week, there was a car that actually overturned in front of my house on Route 12 right there. Um, so for those of you who aren't familiar with that corner, Norton Road actually comes out right onto 12. I am the house directly across the street from Norton Road right on that blind sharp corner. Um, on last Tuesday in the afternoon, I got a phone call from my children. Is that the big one children. close to the road? Uh, I'm the small one really close to the road. The big one's right next to me, but okay, I'm I gotcha. Yeah, so and actually there's a picture you can visualize here. So this is actually my house here, if you're looking southbound on Route 12. These are, this here is from the accident that almost happened on Friday with Casella, where Casella had approached Norton Road where they needed to turn in and had stopped and the truck came behind them and was flying down with a trailer behind him loaded with work equipment on it. He hit his brakes and swerved into the left-hand lane, um, which is these tracks that you'll see here. That was Friday. He luckily did not hit anyone, and by the time I had, I was home on vacation, it happened to be, so I saw the entire accident on my window, but by the time I got outside, he had already peeled and took off again, because he knew he was in the wrong. Um, the second accident that happened, that actually happened on Tuesday, was incredibly dangerous. This is my front porch, from mm -hmm. viewing from my front porch. This is the pictures that my kids sent me at four o'clock saying, when they called me at work and said, mom, there's a car that just crashed and is upside down on its roof, what do we do? You know, I don't want my kids to be walking outside to have to identify somebody's body that's in my front yard. I really don't. This is the accident. Those are the pictures from the accident. Um, and this was all Tuesday. Um, yes. Okay. Yep. You know, these types of accidents happen all the time. We've been incredibly lucky, I would say, that um, up to this point, you know, the accidents have been more minimal. But a lot of people, I think, don't always report everything either. Um, you know, this is a school bus stop as well, which is another concern. Um, the U32 bus stop does meet right there, Route 12 and Norton Road. Um, I've since spoken to them since this accident, and the bus company has been really wonderful that they have agreed to pick up my child at my house now, as opposed to making him wait there because of the concerns that I've raised. Um, but there are other kids in the area, and I anticipate that in the future there might be, you know, more kids that join the area and we'd love to have them, but parents are not gonna be able to have their kids be safe. There's nowhere for them to get off the road that's safe um, in any of that stretch. Um, so, what do you I mean, like her, just to reiterate, her bus stop is a blind bus stop. Um, mm -hmm. The house is blind. You come down through the ledge cut, there's no curb cut. It is a blind bus stop. I mean, the bus sits there and they're coming through. Um, I do have a uh, letter from Richard Langdon. He asked me to read it. Is that okay? He lives in Potterville. Um, if you don't mind real quick, and it kind of just adheres to what she just said. I live with my wife Elaine in Putnamville School House, which we acquired in 1981. The speed limit sign at the southern approach bubble is situated on a downhill section. Many people simply don't brake on the downhill section. They may let their vehicle slow naturally as it goes up the hill. This results in most drivers traveling from the middle of the town at speeds much greater than 35. The sign must be moved further south to give northbound drivers to slow down. In the 38 years that I've lived here, I've had a tractor trailer run through my adjacent vegetable garden, my apple tree in my front yard hit three times, and also had an SUV upside down in my front yard, all from northbound, he's, he's stating. The current placement of the two speed limit signs are ineffective at keeping drivers passing uh, through the town at a reasonable speed. Radar signs on radar signs or signs with blinking lights, LED, um, some sort of signage would surely help if only deployed for just a few months. Um, this is Richard Langdon of Putnamville. 
And pretty much what he's iterating is, you know, I don't want to abide to every road in the town of Middlesex, but Route 12 in Putnamville is the worst corridor in the town of Middlesex. There is no road, there is no inch of this town that is worse than what we have to deal with in Putnamville. And I just kind of, this is the time that we're, this is why we're all here is because we're now finally saying something, but there is no corner in this town that is worse than what we have to deal with in Putnamville. And I want to talk about, it's the volume of traffic, hundreds of cars, Hundreds of state workers, Elmore, Lake Elmore, Stowe, Morrisville, Jay Peak. It's non stop. We have more traffic than Route 2 at Camp Mead. And I will, I would put $10,000 down right now. If you hire a survey company to, to count the cars, we have more traffic. It is dangerous. There's more blind curves and, and dips and dives in that town than, you know, there's only three of them, but it, they're bad. And the ledge cut is not making it much better. Um, you know, it's just. It's just tough, you know, we try to live there. We, you know, like she said, it's, it's dangerous to pull out. We have a blind bus stop. We have future kids moving to Putnamville. There's always gonna be kids getting off that school bus. And it's been a long time coming that we finally said something. We understand there's a budget, there's no doubt about it. And we're just trying to get some sort of a, a plan. Is there a way that the town can at least think about a plan tonight to help us out in Putnamville with the signage? We believe the LED lights help when you drive down elm street in front of codyville and you see that sign i'm not gonna lie and, and a lot of people do have radar detectors these days and it, all of a sudden you hit your brakes you see the sign you think about people passing you don't want to hurt anybody and that's kind of what we need out in pondeville right now we we are the worst area in the town i can just sex. interrupt you for one yep, second no problem so and I apologize because I was going to try and be there for this uh, meeting with the state and I had a conflict and I couldn't be there, but I knew you guys were going to be there. So the state is, I mean, the, the irony of this is, which I know you understand, mm -hmm. this isn't one of our roads. I, know. I mean, it's in our town. It's in our town and our residents live there, but it's not our road. It's a yeah. state highway. So, I'll so we have just, just let me finish. Yeah, so we are, exactly. we are very limited mm -hmm. in terms of what we can do. Yeah. Can I and tell you what they said? Just, just, yeah. just a minute. So I gather what they told you is that there was a process where we could either have these LED signs installed at town expense or the radar, the flashing radar things at town expense. Is that what they told you? So essentially, yes. Yeah. So they'll, they do, they consider the LED flashing solar um, detection signs to be enforcement. They don't consider that regular signage. So the regular signage does fall to them. They are planning on, you know, taking care of the signs when they bump them back and adding the additional um, signage for just like the warning that it's dropping. They're also looking at, they're going to come out this week. Um, the chair of the traffic committee did call me the day after the meeting and he's going to come out and do some additional um, tests to look and see if there's any other trees that can be taken down to improve sight lines. I've also asked for a blind driveway sign, which they are going to try and see if there's a place that they can put that in um, going southbound before my house, because that's really where no one can see. Mm -hmm. um, but they do consider the radar ones to be enforcement, and they said enforcement falls to the town, which is what brings us back here. Ultimately, you know, and looking at it, we're hoping that the select board today will kind of meet us in the middle and help us with this. We're, we understand, obviously, like I'll be stated, that there's a budget and we know that there's only so much that we have. I know that we have a contracted enforcement budget with the sheriff's department who I've spoken to on numerous occasions. And honestly, when there is the state police, because we're called state police as well, and they will sometimes come out, um, but when the state police has come or when the sheriff is there. We do see, I think, for a short period of time, you see a, somewhat of a, of a slower drive through that people are starting to pay attention. But then they disappear again, and it's out of sight, out of mind. Um, so in looking at it from a cost perspective, for me, we know it's an initial investment on the signs to implement them. Um, when I spoke to Ian at the Vermont Traffic um, Committee meeting, he had stated that the signs typically cost in the range of three to $4,000 a piece. So so what we'd be looking at for the two signs would be an investment for the town of seven to eight thousand um, dollars. 
Um, you know, they they don't have any cost to maintain them because they just run off solar or electric to maintain them because they run on solar power. But inevitably, there are batteries that fail. And, yeah. So, and then they're the other piece of it is, is there is a permitting process that the state has already said that they will uh, gladly approve um, and that they recommended the signs just at the meeting, just but they said that it goes to them. And I understand what you're saying, Peter. What, what they pretty much said to kind of relate to this meeting is that if you think about every state road that you go on, every state road, whether Route 111 in London, it doesn't matter where it is, they will not do stuff for towns because if they do one for the town of Village of Putnamville, they have to do the one for the town of Callis. They have to put one in the town of East Montclair. I guess what of course we have. Don't don't get me wrong. Yeah. We have exactly the same issue. Yeah, and, and I, yeah, <laughs> on a much was, smaller was, scale, but we have I the same issue. To, and that's why right. I was trying to reiterate that earlier. Is that I don't want to say that I'm sure there's people live on bad roads everywhere, but I just been saying that I know, and anybody that drives through Putnamville, the traffic flow and the way the people driving and the speed. We, ha we are the worst spot in the town of Middlesex. There is no other corner of 50, 60 miles an hour with line curves. Like I mean, we, get it, we get it, we no, get it. And, and that's why we're, you know. Do you guys have a uh, spec sheet or something on these signs? I, I actually have a couple um, and, you know, you can get them for like two grand directly from but the are factories. We, are, we, are we talking about ones that are uh, flashing the speed, the speed. Mm -hmm. correct. and then when the speed is like five miles an hour over the speed limit, there are lights around it that flash. So the that ones kind of that thing. we would be looking at are the ones, if you're driving into Montpelier right there at Cumming Street and Pearl Street, right in that Birch Grove stretch mm -hmm. there, yep. they would basically be, I mean, that's that's what we're, we're looking for is those. They, and so there's different varying levels. Those are kind of like a base level. There are some that just notify you of your speed, which is the ones that we'd be looking at. There are ones that actually record and track the data, but obviously those are significantly more expensive. I think for me, just the regular, the, the more basic ones are really what we're looking for because it's really just a visible awareness piece for people so that they're paying attention. And I know that um, and when I would you put them? I mean, ideally, I'd like to put them on the 35 on either end of that Putnamville stretch. So on the 35 on the northbound right the near south where part. it says to go down to the lower speed. So there'll be the warning sign that it'll say it's coming down to 35. And then we would actually put it on the same pole as the 35 speed limits as how I envision it. The same as Cummings and Pearl Street, that it has the speed limit sign. And then directly underneath it would be the radar, the solar radar sign would be posted underneath and the it state, on the same. And the state will allow that to be on the same post? Yes, they will. Yeah. And so there's, and um, Sarah had sent over, I know that she has it, so maybe it could be forwarded, that you sent me with the um, specs that I think you maybe talked about. Yeah, I think all the, they, um, yeah, we they got have it. Okay, we got it. all right, yeah, thank yes. You. Yes. So are you saying, I'm just trying to remember where the sign is, um, isn't it sort of before, if you're coming from um, Romney and going up, isn't that 35 um, at the first house? It's directly before the first house, yes. There's that's that the only one? There's not one in the middle of town that also says no. 35? No. Nope. Because mm -mm. there's nowhere. Yeah. There's They're, they're mm -hmm. stating that there's not a good place to put one in the middle there yeah. because of just people don't right. see it. Again, I, mean, I just worry that they're going to speed up again because it's mm -hmm. like that stop sign, especially if they move the stop sign, not stop sign, but the speed sign further closer to Rumney, people are going to forget and where you want them to be slow is in your neighborhood right yeah so i mean i think that those so that if we want turn to, that will otherwise get them into our right onto our exactly I mean, I, like i'm wondering if there isn't a like actually having it in the middle of town is where you want it the way i look at the signs is too could we could it be reasonable you know compromise where we just did one and then you know if you think about it it's really just changing the sign they're probably on some sort of a bracket Every six months, if the town of the maintenance crew come around, undo the nuts and turn the sign backwards, and it shoots southbound, versus that saves the town twenty five hundred bucks, you know, or whatever. You know, what I'm saying, can we can we start with one, and and in six months, the town maintenance guys just come around and turn the sign around. It, 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 You're on the wrong side of the road. So you have to move. No, it. no, yeah, you have yeah. to move it over to the other. The radar is over the other post. So I think, I, and, and I'm just speaking for myself, <laughs> not for the not for the board. But if we're going to do this, I think we have to we have to do it in the yeah. do it in the proper way to have it be effective. And you know, unfortunately, my experience is that the uh, you know, yes, it will slow some people down. I would certainly hope it would. 
but uh, when the city of Montpelier puts their portable thing, which is of course a whole different level of, of cost, and that's one thing we were not too seriously looking at, but looking at years ago, if we had portable ones, we could move them around to different places in town and at least say to people, you know, this isn't just for one part of town, this is getting used everywhere. But that's that's a whole different uh, level of cost and, and problem and other, uh, other issues. I would anecdotally tell you that my darling young children, who are no darling young children, used to consider it a challenge to see how high they could get the sign to go up on uh, on Terra Street, which wasn't necessarily uh, necessarily productive. Well, I think we I, I think we've heard what we what we need to hear. Um, I have another this, question. Did you look at all to? I mean, this is something aside from electronic signs, but look at the cost of having like the lawn signs because I think that those actually are effective as a driver when you see every lawn says 35 miles an hour it's a visual that you as a driver realize um, and that's like not a big I mean you guys could probably each chip in 10 bucks and get a sign right and have that as at least a place you know as a reminder throughout. I think that that would be kind of a band-aid on a much bigger issue, yeah. honestly. I mean, uh, we're looking at a place that has snow eight, nine, yeah. ten months yeah. a year, so for the three months during the summer that we could use that, like, okay, and I, I totally understand, but on as a long-term solution, I don't think yeah. that that's going to be effective, honestly. Other board members? Questions? Yeah. yeah, I mean, questions. I mean, John's here from Casella. If you wanted a business perspective on his trucks, because I know that that is something Okay, let's hear his issue. business perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, business, uh, the business perspective is it's personal, uh, because there was a uh, there was a dryer. I'm very sensitive to roads that are 50 miles an hour where we have residential service. Uh, we, run, we run a lot of trucks, uh, about 15 a day, that are serviced at the rear of the truck. So we have a driver getting out and going to the rear of the truck to service that residential customer. So 50 mile an hour roads, unfortunately about two years ago, uh, August of 17, we had a driver at the Casella division in Burlington who was servicing a residential customer in St. Albans who lost his life mm -hmm. because somebody came around a corner, 50 mile an hour road. Uh, it was a foggy morning, probably 6.15 in the morning um, and hit the back of the truck, killing him instantly. Um, ever since then, we've had a heightened awareness about 50 mile an hour roads or, or more, even 45s, and we've considered what we need to do with customers, residential customers that live in those in those roads. Uh, yeah, one thing that yeah, one no thing we can pull off the road with your trucks. Yeah, not we can, we do that where we can. Yeah, uh, but we right. there's not a lot of places that where we can drive a heavy truck on driveways. But we've we've done a lot to uh, we were investing in trucks that service on the side. Those run at a premium side load trucks to try to get both commodities from the side at once. We've actually been hit one time in the last two years uh, from behind from a uh, a driver, and luckily it was a side load truck. It was one of our two that we have running around, and uh, while that's good for us in the business, the truck our driver was unharmed. The driver that hit him uh, they won't do anything to help people that are coming around those corners too. So um, and, and here to support safety. I don't go to a lot of these uh, because. There's not. A, I know it's a lot to get things going on these, but this is a corner that uh, Kristen serves on the chamber with me. Um, brought to my attention uh, that we we had a near miss. I showed the picture to my drivers, and they told me what had happened. And I said, "Wow, like we need to fix. We need to do something about it. At least see what see what we can do that's reasonable." So you just stop on the road when you're servicing the residential customers right. at Putnam Mill for curbside service. We'll we'll just stop. And then you on the road. have your blinkers. On. We have the we have the flashers going, which are alternating at the tops and bottoms of the corners. Uh, but the driver, it's funny because it's a small, small world in Vermont. Uh, my safety assistant's uh, brother-in-law was the driver of the truck that almost hit us. So this week, right. Labor Day weekend, <laughs> well, they, were having, they were having a conversation about that. So, uh, but he said he was in the wrong and going too fast. And So what's and the worst, what's the, What's worse, the people going south or the people going north, or are they equally bad? Well, I mean, when there are state troopers that stop, and over the years we'll have somebody will stop, you just see the lights going all day long. There's like the blue lights when they when they stop there to get people. All day long the blue lights are going. Are they there very often? Um, I haven't seen them in a while. I was working up till recently, so I don't know. Anybody been home lately? No. When they have had, you know. Is this the sheriff or the state police? The sheriff. 
Sheriff. Sheriff. When I have called both sheriff and state police, they have come within two days and sat on the floor. Well, I mean, we pay money to have them come. Uh, the the sheriff's sheriff. department, yes, but right. I think at the time they had, I think obviously Middlesex has an unusual geography, as many places in Vermont do, where it loops around and it's so wide. Um, you know, we were not seeing them up to the point of meet when I started calling them. I had never seen them in the stretch of Putnam Bell before doing enforcement. Once I've started calling, they do come if there's some a times that it's getting especially bad I will call and say I need somebody here in the next day or two and they have always come and like I said I have seen a significant decrease but it's short-lived um, you know out of sight out of mind that kind of goes away but Vermont State Police has also come when I've called and requested them to come and do speed enforcement um, you know it's just it's tricky you know there's they can only stay for so long so well, we, we struggle every year because we appropriate money for speed enforcement, and generally uh, they're only able to spend 60 to 70 percent of the money because they don't have the people available to, uh, to right. do the work. So that's a problem. I, I would anecdotally tell you for, for two or three years, a neighbor of mine on East Hill Road happened to be, she was a state police officer. And I just asked her as a courtesy, I said, hey, when you're home, can you just park your cruiser at the end of the driveway? Yeah. Boy, did that slow down. Yeah. Yes. Traffic on East Hill, yeah. big time. <laughs> Even though she wasn't in it, it was yeah. just parked there. So maybe it'd be cheaper if we just bought a yeah. retired <laughs> vehicle. Well, that's we park were, it in my yard. We, we, just, we sort of facetiously <laughs> talked about that. Maybe what we should do is, is buy a bunch of dead state police cars and put extra batteries in them. And <laughs> Not the state auction. Anyway, I don't, I don't think the state's going to allow, right. us, allow <laughs> us to do that. And, I, um, and the neighbors have done things in the town to slow down. We have people who plant flowers on the road, which is known to traffic slow common. down vehicular yeah. traffic. We have a mannequin. Um, Where's Pauline. your mannequin? Pauline. Yeah. Pauline. Yeah. 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 Pauline. Yeah. We always doing some yard work in the mm -hmm. or in whatever. The yard. So yeah. we do yeah. do things <laughs> to make people slow down. The things that we know to do during the summer. Again, the I would have think summer. going south, you'd have it would be more with that blind drive here mm -hmm. near your house. It's very yeah. tricky. So yeah. where the because are you getting the long term people from Morrisville and I am yes I get Worcester. the people that are commuting in from Morrisville, Stowe, and Elmore into Montpelier are all coming through my way. Um, the tricky part is right now where it drops down is I mean from my front porch there you can just see there if it goes up the hill there and obviously the next house on the right halfway in between our houses on that hill is where it actually turns to 50. So currently right now, if you're driving through the Putnamville corner, by the time you hit my house, you can already see the 50 sign. So, you're going so you're going by going. about Sherry's house at the bait shop, they can still see the sign from there and they're basically just like, 50, see you later. So they punch it through that corner. Um, and yes, probably mine is one of the more dangerous and they're all dangerous, but I'm probably a little bit higher just because of that blind corner there and we have the whole ledge that lines that whole side of the street so there they can't put any additional signage there either which also complicates things because yeah. of the ledge so would they could this possible to put a 35 where that 50 is now when they move the 50 down that's what they're looking at doing yes I'm hoping I, I haven't they haven't given confirmation that I'm aware of whether they're going to make that 35 of uh, uh, the 50 sign of 35 and then put an additional one further up or whether they're just going to replace the That's that one. Come in. Um, <laughs> but they are supposed, Vermont Transportation is supposed to come back out this week um, and next week to do some additional looking at the trees and the sight lines and then the, the blind drive signage. So that will probably be a, a piece of it I the, can ask. The them. initial 35 is going to be over by Kevin's uh, Highland Gardens. Yeah. And then the slow down 35 with a little arrow that's a warning when you're in the 50, you got to slow down to 35, it's coming up. That's going to be before Kevin's probably coming down the hill from, is it the Winter's house? Winters, uh, the log home there. Mm -hmm. So coming down the hill, you're gonna have to see a sign that says "Warning, 35 coming up." And then at Kevin's, you're gonna be in a 35. Yeah. So. Do we I'd know like when to... when they are gonna move those signs? Do not have any, any dates, but I'd be happy to get them for you. And but I mean, we think it's gonna be fairly soon. Yes, I do. I I, I do feel like the the, com the committee had taken the um, taken it very seriously, and I think you know based on the follow up com conversations I've already had with them, um, it seems like they want to act sooner than later. Um, so I anticipate it'll be soon. Question for Kim: You're not aware of any state grants or? pots of money or any place where we could get some help in dealing with this issue? I mean, I can poke around. I 
did copy a bunch of folks on an email. It was from 2018. East Montpelier had a similar situation. And I was told that they can occasionally <coughs> loan or rent out these portable signs to see. That doesn't necessarily solve the longer term issue that we're talking about. But I can look into that. Well, any help would be a help. I mean, our, our, our struggle is, and I think you understand this, that we live with a budget that gets approved town meeting day. So the budget that started July 1st was approved on town meeting day and will be effective until next July 1st. There's no money in the budget to do this. So if we're going to do it, that means you know, it's got to come out of some other category, which is likely the road maintenance budget or the select board discretionary or some some combination of that. But it, it's it's an issue for us. I mean, if the, the timing the timing couldn't be worse because it's right at the beginning of the fiscal year. Uh, yeah, Kevin. Peter, you mentioned that you typically only use 65 percent of the enforcement budget. Yeah, this is enforcement. I mean, so here's the I know. So here's there? the here's the how rub, much though. Is Kevin. That of the 35. Let, let me just let me just explain to you how it works. Okay. So we set the budget. We sign a contract. Okay. Okay. We don't know till the end of the year how much of that money is going to get spent or not. And by that time, the year's over, and we're in the next year. So yes, that money's going back into the general fund, but it's not like we would have to, I guess, amend our speeding contract and say. You know, we actually want four thousand dollars less speed enforcement this year, and find the money that way. We can do things like that, but I, I'm just saying it presents it presents a challenge. Yeah. It isn't an unbelievable amount of money, but it's when you don't have it, it's an unbelievable amount of money. So uh, I don't know how other board members feel about this. Well, <clears throat> I know there's a lot of speeding around town and, and yours could be the worst there is in town. I have been looking at um, possibly getting some of these signs that do that, but I wasn't looking at that cost. And I'm not sure the state would accept those signs on their road. Because they're, they're, they're a, a, a smaller sign and they, they are solar, but I could move them around town, and that's what I was looking at, talking with the board about uh, possibly doing something like that. And I'm not sure that's a, a fit here or not, but I still those would were like how to much? look into that. I remember the. Uh, yeah, well, we were looking at several hundred dollars right, per that's sign, what I remember. not several thousand. Right. I think the last time we had this discussion was with Angelo Napolitano, and he had one for 750 bucks. Right. 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 So it's a start. I, I guess one of the things we can do is contact the state and see, you know, if there are other if there are other options. We can reduce the cost a little bit. That's a huge help for us. Um, if there are signs, I don't know whether it makes sense to to move them around town. I mean, maybe we have some we move around town and some we don't. I mean, we have a right. speeding problem everywhere in town. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yours is particularly dangerous just because of the way the yeah. the way the, the road is. Traffic too. Well, um, the I will say there. is that road is that road deteriorates and doesn't seem to get repaired by the state. You would think that would slow people down some, but it doesn't <laughs> seem to. Let it go. <laughs> uh, the tractor trailers just aim at those potholes and then the slam bang. Oh, I know. I know. I know. Well, I've often said, I've often said over the years, we keep some of our, our gravel roads too smooth because it makes people drive faster on. Maybe we should <laughs> keep some of the, preserve some of the potholes and speed bumps and whatever. Anyway, um, I, I, I guess, I, I guess what I'm sensing um, is that we need to think about this and, and do a little research. I'd like yeah. to do a little research yeah. into the thing. Yeah. I mean, I think that signs for them are, are a great idea, but I'd like to do a little research as far as gone okay. and what the state would allow. Yep. So so I guess what we would say is we'll commit to you and um, keep you in the loop about what's going on, but it would be helpful to know, and we can try and find out too, but it would be helpful to know when the state is going to move those signs, because there's no point 
I mean, unless they say we can't do it until next spring or something, heaven forbid. Um, but it would be certainly better to have them move the signs and then our, put our signs on there. I'm happy to get that information for you this week and send it over. Okay. Um, I can also ask them for a drawing with on the map of where they're going to put them for the location so that you'll have That would be well. great. Yeah. That absolutely. would be great. Right. Okay, I mean, I, thank you all for, yeah, I wouldn't want to leave here without mentioning winter um, <laughs> because, um, you yeah. know, we're talking about it during the time when we're having, we've had some pretty bad situations in the past week and a half or so. But I will tell you, in the winter, when the plows come up and down Route 12, we sit, we live um, behind Jim and Sherry. Um, our driveway is behind Jim and Sherry and Gloria, which is the big blue house on, on Route 12. Um, and getting out of there in the winter is absolutely treacherous. And I'm sure for the other folks oh. here, getting out of their driveways in the winter is Oh, it's only worse, the, right. The snow banks are way really? beyond what we can see above or around as we're pulling out of our driveways. And from, I would say from Sherry's driveway, probably close to Norton Road, that road is so slick every year. It's always slick. So as we're pulling out of our driveway, people coming north are sliding through town. Mm -hmm. And so stepping on their brakes doesn't do any good. And, and I slide, I've, I've gone right past my driveway going, 20 miles an hour just kind of cruise by the driveway with my brake on and have to go up to Norton Road and turn around and come back. So I just don't want to miss an opportunity to mention how treacherous it is in the winter. And I agree it's treacherous. I would, I, I would tell you though, again, unfortunately, you know, <sighs> We plow the dirt roads in town. We don't we don't plow that road. So those aren't our trucks, and we're not responsible for sanding. In fact, we're not allowed to drop sand or salt on the. So really, on we're the pretty state easy road. out there in Bonneville for you. I'm sorry, what? Pretty easy yeah, out there in Bonneville for you. I mean, you know, here's our time to. And, that, and I'll just mention I, I mentioned this in email to my neighbors, but um, this there is a precedent for a 25 mile from a 50 to a 25. I drive to Hyde Park every day. And when you, those of you that know Route 12, you go into Morrisville. I was just going to say, I to thought 25. it was 50 to 25. It's stupid. You have a sight line of about a quarter yes. mile. It's ridiculous. But they have yeah. it in Morrisville. And I, it's for them simple. to have said, for the for VTrans to have mm -hmm. said, you can't go from 50 to 25. That's true. And it's on the same road. I and so I, yeah, whoever is communicating with VTrans, I hope that, that you'll, yeah. you'll talk with them because I'm not done with it. I mean, this right. is way too important. I, it's literally, it's scary. And I hate to go visit Marge with my car because uh, when we drop off She's the dog, because she, the car is coming north. She has no visibility. You need 120 no, feet. At 40 miles an hour, you need 120 feet to be able to stop. There's nowhere in that village you have 120 feet to stop. Right. So, so Pam, it's, excuse it me? just needs more attention. There's something possibly that you could work on. If they're saying that it can't be reduced to 25, and in fact it can be, um, uh, you know, yeah. maybe yeah. we can make a special yeah, request. I don't know. I don't know. Info. Yeah, obviously, that doesn't match. So something, something is right. And I didn't even at, at the time. I really, I didn't know about the the law being that it couldn't be more than 15 miles per hour for that allowance before going into the meeting. Otherwise, I hopefully would have looked for that precedent. But I'm happy to bring it back up to their attention based on that and um, see what they say. I'm just going to address you as a town clerk. So just to refresh your memory, every year we have town meeting, and in that town meeting is a warning. And you can okay. submit a petitioned article or maybe even bring it to the select board and ask them to put on the warning, shall the voters approve $8,000 for signs? And then you can come to the town meeting, and the voters will decide. And then that money is yours. The okay. signs in the in the village of Putnamville, in the which is part of Middlesex. Right. I know, yeah. but I mean, if you just have eight thousand dollars, other I know. Other okay, roads okay. Might but what I'm saying is, I'm just right. Yeah. right. And a lot of yeah. people don't know for that. They don't know how the, the system the works, morning. and that is how the system right. works. Yep. And you know, yep. it makes my heart beat because this is beautiful Vermont democracy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a couple of avenues. <laughs> she likes the best. Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. democracy in action. Yeah. <laughs> We appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Thanks okay. Well, thank you all for coming. Thank Come you. to some other So let's please just make sure oh gosh. that whatever Listen we're going to do it, like a, a we do it yep, yeah. soon and get back to them because yeah. obviously they're 
anxious, and I don't blame yeah. them. I mean, no, it, it is either. scary. It's really scary. It is scary. Yeah. Last year, we only spent 50% of the budget. So, and, you know, I've been monitoring the enforcement, and it really is atrocious when they do it. And They do it at times. I've seen it at like they're not, in the afternoon. They're not really always commute times. The other thing is, one day they started at 1045 and left at 11. Yeah, because they got called out. Probably, but yeah. I'm just saying that those are the things that you're up against. Well, right. I'm a big spender, so I'm happy to spend money on it. I mean, because I, I can try to do that all the time, and it really is dangerous, yeah. and it's it is a scary dangerous. place. And and the thing is, is that those houses are very close together, and 35 is too fast as it is. I mean, yeah. you're if a kid ran out, you know, you'd be you'd be in trouble. I mean, it's not a good place. And well, if these definite. signs, and I I, I mean, who knows what read on the internet whether it's true or not but there's a lot of stuff on the internet about these signs and most of it is positive that they do work yeah. Yeah. as people get used to them being there they don't work quite as well but they do work yeah. Yeah. and they work to have little black cats sitting on the lawn you think it's going to run out these things slow yeah. people down like yeah. i mean and i know that they were like well that's a band-aid but it's it actually works changing Even the signs just... around like uh one that I think of in particular is because I drive by it, but it's uh, on Windywood Road in Barry Town. You'd think it's just outside the city limits, but it's Barry Town. And the sign doesn't stay there all the time. They move those signs all over Barry Town. But it keeps you, I'll, as soon as I see the sign, I look down, and I'm usually doing pretty good, so maybe I'm doing 30. So I have. I'll still slow down a little bit. Wow, more. if that's as fast as you go, that's not I mean, on that good. Road, right, because I know the speed limit's 25. <laughs> but I'm still speeding. Well, so the sign there? starts flashing, but they move these signs around yeah. right. when they come back. Well, if they're, you know, and, and you gotta, you got to get the nuts that, you know, have this have this special thing. So, you know, the kids can't grab them and run away with them. Yeah. But, <laughs> but if all they are is attached to these posts with U-bolts, it's no big deal to move them around as long as they have the right, cool. right wrench. Yeah. I, I just think, you know, the, the concept of spending less money on police enforcement, which doesn't seem to be working, right. and spending yeah. that money on signs, to me, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And I think you yeah. can. And as much as it's, you know, <laughs> as much as our fund balance situation at the end of last year wasn't great, the bottom line, it wasn't the speed enforcement that, that, that hurt it, it helped us. But, um, you know, we've been hearing for as long as I've been on the select board, we've been having complaints about speeding. I mean, this is the most serious altogether at once type thing we've ever had, but we've had a lot of complaints over the years about speeding. Yeah. Well, and I think you can distinguish Putnam Mill from other parts of town. Well, you, you can in the, in the fact that that's a 50 mile an hour zone that leads into it from both directions. Right. And there's not even a welcome to Putnamville sign, so like people don't, they, they come upon it, unless you're a regular commuter, you come upon it and suddenly there's this village, you know, That's and true. and so you don't have that warning and then you're like, oh, but, it's just a little village, I'll just get through it. And I think that that's... I mean, even having a welcome sign would, I I'm think sure. they should have those uh, little things of drive slowly, there are children here. I think those are effective. I think too. those are effective too. Yeah. But, well, they're but all, those again are, you know, they're all, they're not perfect. They're all effective to some degree. Right. Uh, I think our role, I mean, it's just unbelievable to me <laughs> that it's a state highway yeah. and they say the town's is responsible for enforcement. Uh -huh. I mean, that just pushes me right over the edge. That's their road, for Christ's sake. But anyway. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, but this well, is let's see, Steve, if you could, uh, oh, that's scary. Very yeah. scary. If you, if you could do some, because if we can get the state to accept signs that are more moderate in cost, I think any flashing sign is, you know, it's not going to make a difference if it's that big or that big. I don't think that much. And if there's a big difference in cost, well, that obviously makes a big difference. It says, you know, they have these technical requirements, including the RSFS, shall include the legend, your speed is blank MPH. You know, there are some, this is where I think the costs come in. And that they must they must do they must activate yeah, in certain ways like well, they must go blank except when you oh, go 15 I'm miles an hour over yeah. the speed limit. I'm just saying that this is what the, that's why I gave you those specs. Right, 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 right. But you would hope that you would well, hope that the sign guys know what those requirements are. You would think that. Yeah. Well, I asked AOT how much they would cost. And they said three thousand to four thousand per sign. Yeah. There yeah. You go. yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Well, what were those ones that Alvy was showing us? 2,500. Yeah, I don't think they meet all these yeah, yeah, requirements. Yeah, yeah. Wow. 
and and you know you can well, you can bet ask anyway. You can bet the next you know the next request is going to be for signs up here. Oh yeah. And here and there and everywhere. I mean, yeah. what what I would really like to have if we could ever any way anyhow find the money is the movable ones where you can put them on East Hill for a week and then you put them on Center Road for a week and then you put them on Shady Rail for a week. But those are super expensive. Yeah. yeah. They're a lot more expensive. Those are the trailer signs. Yeah. They're probably twenty thousand dollars a piece or twenty five thousand really? dollars. Yeah. yeah. How many do you think Montpelier has? Those are two. Picks. They have two of them, I think. What's but this? anyway. Yeah. If there was, if there was some way, I mean, if these, if these eight thousand dollar signs, they are movable to the extent you undo yeah. the U bolts and move them. Well, four thousand a piece. Yeah, but four thousand a piece is a lot different than twenty thousand okay. dollars. I'm just saying, for us to buy two one year and two the next year and two the next year, and all of a sudden we have six of them, uh, I don't know. That's well, that possibility. I mean, that. that. So. But the concept, the concept of. You know, not having these never used contracts with Vermont State Police and saying or the Sheriff's Department. Sheriff's Department, yeah. And and saying yeah. you know, and then having them come at times when people don't speed. I mean if if they can't come during drive time, we're just throwing our money right down the right. rat hole. And I've basically. seen them like at two thirty in the afternoon. Right, it's ridiculous. I mean it isn't if, if it's near the school and there are people getting out of school, maybe it is yeah, a it bit wasn't near the school. I right. think it was on East Hill. Yeah. I just want you to know they can only use the speed trailers for a maximum of two weeks at any in particular place. Oh. So someone would have to move those. Well, we're not going to get those anyway. Wait a minute. Well, we're not going to get the trailers. We're not going to anyway. get the trailers anyway. That's on that. Okay, so we need to. We are now officially way behind, uh, way behind schedule. So, um, as you will all recall. We had this Welch Park discussion back in the spring yeah. about shall we consider being part of the potable water? We are now part of the potable water system over there, which we have never used and I can't ever imagine we're going to use. Um, the uh, Benderson folks, I believe I'm using the right name, were the owners of the uh, telephone building said they were going to do the repairs to the potable water system about thirty thousand dollars and those repairs have been done and we would have until september 1st to decide if we wanted to continue to be part of that again not using it and pay 15 percent of that bill and risk future bills which could even be more or if we want to just be excluded from the potable water thing and to tell you the truth you know shame on me I kind of kind of slipped off my radar screen until uh, Carl Balin called me last week and said September 1st is coming right up what are you guys going to do and I, I said well he sold it what I heard, I heard he sold it he sold what his business he sold the business he didn't business. sell the he building still owns the buildings oh, okay. and the land um in thinking about it again and reading uh Marika sent me a bunch of the uh, minutes from the from the meeting last spring just to remind me of, of all the stuff that I've summarized for you. In my opinion, it makes no sense for us to be part of that potable water system. And the risk of, I mean, the risk of future expenses to maintain that, I don't see why we want to take that on. I mean, we would we would spend the money to drill another well down by our building if, if heaven forbid that well ever failed. Right. We do need to be part. We do need to be part of the fire protection part of that water, um, and this has nothing to do with that. Is he going off of it? He hadn't decided, but he was. He sa I said, what are you going to do? He said, there's a 90% chance I'm going to get off it because I can drill another well up by my buildings and I just don't like the uncertainty of the risk going forward and that well has never been that great anyway and who knows what the future use of that, of that building is. Right now, the water demand at that building, and I'm talking about the telephone building, is relatively low because there's nobody there during the day. Right, Everybody right. comes, they hop in their trucks and they go. So as much as it's rated for more water, if all of a sudden that was filled with uh, well, let's say it got converted space. to an office building, so there were all of a sudden 150 people working in there, you know, flushing toilets and doing everything else that they would be doing. There's a good chance that well would fail. 
So what's the likelihood that's going to happen? I have no idea. But why would we want to incur that risk is my question. So my recommendation would be that, that we get it over with and decide that we don't want to be part of that and we notify them of that. I'm on board with that. Yeah. I don't have any particular problem. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't either. So would somebody like to make a little put out that our, our friend didn't bother to CC me a copy of the permit that was issued. I, I, I know you board. did. Okay. I know, but you're, yeah. you know, you're not burning. Nope. Well, make no mistake who burn anyone. <clears throat> yeah. We don't need to go there. That's been an issue for a while. So yeah. is somebody willing I'll, to make I'll that move, motion? I'll move that we uh, notify whoever that we're not going to take part in. Uh, the potable water. Anderson. Just could I just could I, for the clarification, it's it's not just that it's potable water, it's that it's a common well. Isn't that the difference? I mean all wells should be potable water, correct? But it's the well it's yes, the well it and is. the potable water system. Oh, I just want to have a correct term in the mix yeah. because it was it was heretofore a common well. What you're saying is we're pulling out of the common well, correct? Because the other parties don't have access you can put to water. It's a common well, a common well for the no. potable water though. Yes, there you you say go. potable water, because as much as it's a common well, no one else is hooked up to it except the vendors. Right, but I just want to make sure that we get the description. No, correct. I agree. Both, both of yeah. Or you could say common. I'll second that. Draw Welch Park well or something like that. Well. Potable water. <laughs> yeah, you need to put potable water. Common. Because well. it's a common well with potable, potable, water. potable water. And it is. Right. And the truth of the matter is, it is the only well. The other thing that we did participate in fixing last year was there was a pump down in the yeah. river which right. fills the fire pond. We're still going to be part of that, and we need to be part of that. We yeah. should be part of that. Yeah. So it's been yeah. moved and seconded to notify uh, Benderson and Welch Park that we are all other withdrawing. Other, all other members of Welch yeah. Park. Now the question is not just Benderson. that I don't. Well, let's let's vote on it first. Well, All those no in second. What? Steve second. Steve second. Well. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. We've made a decision. I don't know what has to happen to make that happen. I don't know if we have to amend the bylaws. I would suspect we would. I would suspect. How about this amending the motion so that it would say, and the necessary, so long as the necessary paperwork is prepared by Benderson? Tennant Benderson or something like that. Or Welch Park. Yeah, well, we, well, I mean, if we say Welch Park, then Carl will be upset that he has to pay part of the paper. Well, I, the paper. <laughs> I would think it has to be the association. Yeah. I, I would think it, think it has to be the association. And besides, well, guess, it's going to affect that percentage, too. Right. And right. I have one more, two more parts to this question. Effective when number one well it's effective and, it's effective retroactively because you know they incurred this thirty thousand dollar expense right. and they agreed that they would allow us not to pay that right, right but we've been paying for water testing every month or whenever it's done as well so that's my second question is now how is that going to be handled and are you paying for the whole park or just our no, portion? Just no our, our portion. percentage just our portion but but the bills still are coming in, have been coming in. Um, so we Where need do they come from? From the person who does the water testing. I don't know the name of it. Well, we have a. I, so I guess I guess what it needs to be is Simon. effective effective September first for any expenses other than the recent substantial repair. So. You know, I don't think it's fair for us to go back and say we're not going to pay for the water testing since June. That would be my thing. Wait a second. You just did that backwards. You, you did that no. backwards. Yeah. You don't, expenses except. You don't want to accept that we're getting out of everything and we're going to pay our 15 percent on the $38,000. No, 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 no. Well, that's what it sounds like. I'm sorry. And, and maybe I did say it upside down and backwards. What I'm trying to say is that. We entered into this agreement where we had until September 1st to decide if we were going to participate in this $30,000 repair or not. We're now saying, no, thank you. We're choosing not to. So that is a, a retroactive decision by previous action of the, I don't know whether it was the Welch Park Board or us in Benderson or who, or who it was, but it, it was, was, it was definitely an agreement. It was, it was the, the board, but... 
Benderson appeared. He, he's not a member. They're not a member of the board, are they, Benderson? I think it's Carl and you and me and who else? Well, Matt Oates appeared on behalf of Benderson. Right. All right. Yeah, they must be. Yeah. They're part of the association, so they must have a seat yeah. on that board. And that's what Matt was doing. Okay, so then we should, well, what have you written so far, Sarah? <laughs> Uh, I have written uh, Phil Moves and Steve Second uh, to withdraw from the Commonwealth for Potable Water in Welsh Park. Steve Second and motion passes. Then, and then, Mary, perhaps we should amend the bylaws. Here we are. And then okay. Dorinda said, effective when? And Peter said, effective retroactively. And there was some discussion about Peter saying something like, effective September 1st for all expenses except the, uh, the uh, repairing the well. Which we're not. Right. So I think you guys need a new motion to be. I think, I think we need a new I, motion I, for the other bill. Are you going to put all that stuff in the minutes? No, I'm just reading from my notes right now. Okay, After so you guys get everything together, I'll tidy it all up. So, wouldn't the other thing do to, to have us make a motion that we agree that for other bills, which are basically just the water testing, right? You haven't received any other bills? Um, I'd have to go look. I, I can't remember. Okay, so are we going to pay for the water bills if we're not in, in it? Not effective September one. No, is what you. I don't right. think. I don't think this was an issue back when we had the discussion. Nobody. You know, knew. Benderson offered to say, "Listen, we're going to repair it at our expense. You guys can make a decision by September first whether you want to be in or out." Okay. Right. So now we're saying we're out. Right. But we didn't say. Does that mean we go back to June for the water testing bills? Oh, I, I just think they were. I just think they were incredibly generous to let us do that. And what are those? What's our share of those water bills, testing bills? It's pretty small, it's right? It's small. Yeah, it's like in the low teens, I think, or nine or teens. Or, okay. I can go get the book. I mean, no, I mean it's it's, it's a few hundred dollars. Right. That's, that's that, a going. Right? That's just a going forward thing. Right. 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 Yeah. So there's a bunch of things we have to have the date. We have to withdraw, we have to have the proper notification, and we have to have who's going to be responsible for the paperwork, and we have to explicitly say, pursuant to you know some type of an agreement made at a, whatever the date of that previous meeting is with Benderson. We're withdrawing, and they assume all the liability for that bill. So. Well, which they've already done and paid. I, I, know, I think what we, we need to, to do is call a Welch Park meeting yeah. and have that part of a Welch yeah. Park meeting. And at the same time, we need to say, remember, guys, we said we wanted to stop doing the bookkeeping. You know, Dorinda's offered to do the bookkeeping. I don't know if that offer still stands, but, you know, it's going to be done with a separate set of books, separate bank account. We're no right. longer going to be the... The bank. The bank. Okay, so how... You're saying that we have to do it here, and then we have to take the Welch Park. I would say so. Yeah. I would say we've made the so decision. Like we're going out. So I would. Need to have I would notify. I would notify them that no. we have made that decision. <laughs> Go ahead. Have Sarah. Have Sarah <laughs> well, send them a letter and yeah. say, yeah. you know, we need as soon as we can to have a Welch Park meeting so we can memorialize all this, and by then. Um, but yeah. we have to have a motion we can show them that says we're withdrawing on these conditions. Yeah. So Phil's going to make that motion. No, go ahead, Mary. You no, 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 got no. All, I have all the elements. You could look at them. <laughs> well, we've already made one motion on the on the big bill. So the, the second motion just needs to be that we agree to pay our pro rate share of any other miscellaneous bills that have occurred between. Prior to 9-1. Right. You want to have the That's date, right. you right. want to have who we give the notice to, you want to have, um, make sure that that it's contingent on Benerson continuing to assume all liability for the repairs and contingent on Welch Park doing the paperwork. But does that need to be an R motion? Well, I mean, you want to be able to present it okay, to Mary, Welch Park. Okay, then why don't you make that motion? Well, Instead of asking somebody else to make it. I didn't want to, because you already have a motion. Well, we've made the motion on the September big bill. September 1st, uh, I move that the town of Middlesex withdraw from 
de... Mary, we've already withdrawn. We've okay. been there and, and done that. So let's talk and about just the other on, bill. And uh, uh, tenant, or whatever you call him, Benderson, uh, assuming, continuing to assume all liability for the repairs made to, what is it, the water system? Potable water system. The potable water mm -hmm. system. And contingent on um, the paperwork necessary paperwork to uh, withdraw being the, the cost of the paperwork being borne by the Welch Park Association. So what do we think that paperwork is? An amendment to the bylaws? Well, then we don't have to re resolve it. We can let whoever they hire as a lawyer resolve what they need to do. But that motion doesn't include uh, the bills to, to the pre the prorated share of miscellaneous bills prior to September 1, excluding any recent repairs on the Commonwealth, or whatever you call it. You want to include that? Well, why do we have to? If we're effective September 1, we don't have right. to because say we that we're assuming them because we already paid them. They've come and they've yeah. been paid them. That's true. Okay, except I think you probably want to get into the record that you're not going to just just that you're not going to pay for that well, that you're not going to go pay any 15% for the repairs on the wells, right? Well, that's what right. I no, said. We made, we made that, that motion and done that. No, you haven't. No, I said assuming that Ben, contingent on Benderson assuming all liability for expenses made for the com potable common well. Okay. So the. All right, contingent on Benderson, Mary moves, effective September 1st. This is a mess. Contingent on Benderson making repairs to the potable water system and contingent on the cost of the paperwork being borne by Benderson? No. no. By, well, yeah. by, by the Wells Park Association. Borne by the... And this is just an amendment to the previous motion, which was very simply... Uh, I'd make it a second motion. Okay. I think that's clear, isn't okay. it? Make it a second motion. So you can say the withdrawal is contingent on something like that. Okay, is so that Mary that? moves that the withdrawal is contingent on. Okay. And if we don't have the date in, put the date in on the second motion. It is, it is effective September 1 and contingent on Benderson making repairs to the puddle water system. Should we just say paying for repairs? Of Future yeah. repairs and expenses. This Past and future. Thank you. <laughs> I just, how, how, we don't have any look, we got, look, 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 look. Could we just go back? The way I'm thinking about this, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but the way I'm thinking about this is we got two different situations. They gave us an exception where we had till September 1st, and now being September 3rd, to make a decision about whether we wanted to be in or out. And if we wanted to be out, then we were going to be not responsible for this major repair that they did this summer. Right. We wouldn't be of any part of it. Right. And the first motion to me said, we've decided to be out, and therefore it's our expectation that we will not be responsible for our share of that large repair bill. Mary's motion is addressing what about other expenses, the water test. Well, testing. I was trying to say that our withdrawal and, that, and the question is, withdrawing from what? From the Articles of Association, the bylaws, from the Welch Park Association? No, we're not withdrawing from the Welch Park Association. No, but what are we, what are we, when we're withdrawing, isn't that the term you use? Yeah, I think so. We're giving okay. up our rights to this well. I mean, yeah, what we're yeah. not right. really doing is we're giving up our right. It, that's more, I mean, all I'm saying is, you know, we should have the right language so it's clear no, I, I agree. what we're doing just because we don't want to give up more than we have to. So maybe we want to say that we're giving up the right to access to the common potable water well. That's what that... Contingent, no, withdrawing is not... Anyway, so long as contingent on, they're paying all the expenses, and I don't see why it wouldn't be past the future if we're withdrawing from... Maybe we're withdrawing we from the paid. ability to use the common... Water well. And be responsible for the expenses going right. forward because we've already paid. So the question is: the question is, I don't remember 
that we had any discussion back when ben, we had that phone conference when Benderson was saying, you know, they'll let us have until September 1st to decide what we want to do, that anybody brought up, them or us, what about the, any bills that happen in the meantime, other bills? So we have three months, roughly, of water testing bills. And the question is if we want to make a big deal out of those or not. I mean, no, to me, I would say it's fair no. to say we'll pay them yeah. until September 1st. After September 1st, no. Right. So the question is how we say that. Right. Well, I think we have to say we, we want to say the old liabilities and any new ones and associated costs into That's the fine. future. That's fine. Okay. So and we're just, not making a big deal about this. I, I know, I'm just trying to clean this all up. What if you just had a like effective September one, the town of Middlesex forfeits all future rights and access to the Commonwealth of Pueblo Water in Welch Park, contingent on the Welch Park Associate that contingent on the Welch that's weird. Welch Park Association prepare and pay for all supporting documentation. Does that does that yeah. But it's contingent on two things. Yep. One, okay, so you got both of those contingencies? Yes, yeah. just prepare and pay for also supporting documentation and what else? And Benderson assuming all past and future liability for repairs to the system and associated costs and costs associated there. Future there with. liability and repairs, or does it should be right repairs and liability? Does it matter? Assume all past and future. past liability. Okay, associated with the system. Now don't use associated don't with use the system. and associated costs. So and why would we say costs. past? Because that's the thirty thousand dollars of what they right, already. Right, but we've also paid past water testing. Right. We paid it. We. Uh, I, I mean. But we're talking about past liability. I mean, if the I was all I'm saying is, if I was Benderson, okay. if all of a sudden somebody come up came up and said, "Hey, last May you guys were supposed to do this big thing and you didn't do it, and now you're going to do it now," and all of a sudden we get hooked with fifteen percent of it. Okay, so past so. Past and future liability concerning maintenance of said well and any future costs associated with it. How's that? So we're talking about after June, whatever the date was. No, we're just, we're just doing everything September one, effective September one. But they've already no, we're probably not. paid for the repair, right? That's, what the, that's what the past is. The past liability. Yeah, but it's only for that one item. I mean, you're. I, I, if I was Benderson's okay. lawyer, I would say, right. you know, we're not going to we're not going to let you off the hook on everything. We'll let you off the hook on the thirty thousand, but we're not going to let you off the hook on something else that happened in the past, which right. bubbles to the surface. No, but right. I'm saying that past and future liability for the well and future. So you say future, but you can't say the past. It. I know the past is for that thirty thousand. Well, then you're going to have to specifically assume all you know what? Uh, the you know thirty thousand dollars. Why don't we just put way this beyond what we So were listen, doing here's, anyway. here's what I would say. Here's what I would say. I'm, I'm willing to withdraw my previous motion, which you've already approved. Let's just have a motion and have everything and in it, and have and have Rob Halpert do the language, or you and Rob Halpert do the language. We don't need to sit here and try and wordsmith this. I think we get the idea of what we're trying to do. We need to put it into legal language and get it over to them as soon as we can. Okay, but does that, does Phil's motion, that's still a done, that is a done deal, correct? That's no, we're gonna, we're gonna no. can that. Can you read my motion? <laughs> well. Um, Phil moves and Steve seconds uh, that the town of Middlesex re, uh, withdraw from the Commonwealth for puddle water in Welch Park. I think we well, I that. would leave that. I would leave, leave that. that. Yes. And just and just have him write whatever we need for the because other stuff. we as a board, we all said That's, yes. Yes. To you did. that. You did say that. Motion. So we got we got bond. So now let, now let Mary and Rob Helper draw up the. Okay. Language. Yes. Should we, I think we should say instead of withdrawing from the Commonwealth, I think you should say withdrawing all interests or forfeiting all interests. In Whatever. Yeah. yeah. It just sounds. I just want to. I just want to get this to them quickly because we promised them we'd <laughs> let them know by September first. Okay. okay. 
Okay. And if, if it we keep took on us this two years to get right them to now, the table, gonna they're not going to remember that September 1st. Yes, I look at you guys don't have to read the minutes afterwards. I'm sitting here going, ah! Oh, oh, I know, no, I mean, no, no, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Okay. And, and we need to do it right. And we, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call, um, oh, Jesus Christ, now I can't think of his name. Carl. Well, give us Carl. Name. And tell him, you know, we're withdrawing, so you can know that we're we're figuring out the language and whatever, and we need to have a Welch Park meeting, ASAP. Okay. Because hey. the town has never been involved. You so say you're not withdrawing. You've never ever had any access to this well. So we had the right. We had the right. Well, we had the right. Well, we, the right. well, we haven't even really. We found out we haven't even really had the right because the yep. permit didn't include us. Remember? Right. Anyway, <laughs> we don't need to go back. We don't need to go back to that. No. Right. Bernie's good job of representing yeah. us and giving us all the permit. Maria, the man with a lot of hats. <sighs> okay, we're now even farther behind. So let's keep charging ahead here. Middlesex.org emails. I, that, that's fast. I haven't done anything about it yet. I was a little busy. Okay. <laughs> you can make a grandfather. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, my God. Congratulations. When? Yeah. When is that going to happen? It did. It did. It did. It's on Sunday at uh, 526. And so you have a baby. Boy. Oh, exciting. Yeah. Local, Local or one? not? Huh? Local? Or do you have to travel to see the baby? St. Albans. Oh, that's not yeah. bad. Tell, yeah. tell me how much this baby weighs. 11.7. What? Uh, <laughs> full size. Full size. Full 11 size. pounds, yeah, 7 ounces. Already. Is that, are we yeah. putting this on TV? Yeah, we got it in there. Okay. <laughs> so I was telling him he was 22 inches, you said? Yeah, 20, 22. Matthew, <laughs> my son Matthew, when Chunk. he was born, Chunk. was 23 inches and weighed like 10 pounds, 8 ounces. Is, or a, is he a big man now? So, very yeah. big. Oh, yeah, like what? 6'5? Oh, yeah, 6'5. Wow. 6'5. He looks like, like three months old. Like baby <laughs> took the place <laughs> of this. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. yeah. so, I mean, basically, basically where we are, right, is we have the proposal from Ruben, the, I'll call that the expensive option. Yeah. And we become aware of another option, right. which may be less costly. Yes. And I've, I've read through all their brochures. I have a call in to, okay. I can't remember his name, who's the one I think maybe came in. Yeah. Um, and I've been through this stuff that they do things differently than the way RB technology does. And I think looking at it, that may have some advantages. Um, for us, um, as far as I archiving email, they run some their own stuff, so you don't have to buy an Office 365 license, and they um, um, and they you know they run their own cloud, and so they've got it set up, and they they handle a number of municipalities and school districts, so they're familiar yeah. with them. So I really just have to get this guy on the phone um, and talk with him and see if I can set up a meeting and get some more details. But I think it fact my impression is that it's more cost effective. Well I would ask them I would ask them to get us a proposal. Yeah. So what towns around here do you use them, do you know? I, it's in the it's in the um, I think Bolton, it's in their brochure. Bol what? I think Bolton was one of them if I recall to be wrong. Well that's exciting. How much Could money be. would we save? And no three stops at? I don't know. I mean, in, I mean, tech's expensive in any yeah. fashion, but if we can get some stuff streamlined yeah. um, and get away from yeah. some of this licensing, yeah. which seems to be their approach, where they, they seem to license at their level mm -hmm. and build that into the cost, whereas instead of us then having to buy a license for my email and your email and you know, right. going on and on, they, they, it looks like they try to... Um, bundle. And all, all, those all I would all I would say is, and I understand what you're going through, but I have been going through a nightmare with our friend about the fire department, where he is just bombarding me. And you, some of you have gotten copies yeah. of some of this. I, stuff. I, I saw the one you sent, the thing you sent back to him. And it just concerns me more and more that I'm using my personal email yeah. to do that. Yeah, we've got to have that. So anyway, in place. enough said. Yeah. Okay. But I will work on it. I will get. I will get back to it now that I'll have plenty of time. No. Hey, Grandpa. Grandpa. And pictures yeah. after the meeting. We so what's your, what's your, your grandparent? What's your grandfather's name? My grandson. Grandpa? Yeah, are you going to be grumpy, grumpy, uh, Nino. 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 I like that. 
Italian. Is that huh? like? Yeah, that's oh, awesome. Your, is, is it your son or your daughter that had? had I always have this, a daughter. Okay, is the spa, is your daughter's uh, spouse Italian? No, but my wife is. Therefore, oh, everybody so. has to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. No, and that's on the side. <laughs> so, you're Nino, and what is she? Nona. Nona? Yeah. That's, that's kind of exotic. Good. Yeah, it is. That's nice. Well, that's, Nino, that's what Nona. her, her um, Roberta's mother was always Nona to, uh, to Sarah. And then when we inherited the, the, the two boys, um, the grandchildren, it was like, okay, well, we'll we got to decide on something. So that's where uh, the Nino got assigned to me, so it just carried right through. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Doc, though. Oh. We don't need to go into where that came from. Okay. Some time over a beer, I'd be okay. Happy okay. To tell you, but <laughs> there aren't very many Docos out there either. So. No. Yeah. Scott was Bobby. Ah, okay. Aww. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. 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 Throw yours in the hat. And Steve. amend amendment to the agenda. <laughs> Review the postcard. The postcard. Are you guys willing to do a postcard? Because that would save on money. Yeah. Yeah. Although I hope this doesn't go the way of the DMV postcard where everyone was like, what the heck? The Solder's telling me? And like, we just weird, like, is this, this was vetted by Paul. So yeah. Okay. It was. I just, bet, you know. I would, I would also say we should, we should compliment it with a front porch forum post. Too. Yeah. Rather than just having this show up out yeah. of nowhere. I'll put it on hot pink. Would that be okay with the road crew? Camouflage, probably. Okay. Why do we need the clause which will be pushed back because of circumstances? That's what our road foreman added. Okay. You wrote it and he added that? Yeah, he did. But it, we've already said it longer average winter is too devastating. There were some things that Paul edited that he couldn't <clears throat> read that he insisted be in that in that postcard. That and so that's it. My name's not on this. But ours okay. is. So here's so here's my <laughs> we don't need here's for our my future delays either. Here's my edit. I think we should amend our five year plan. And I don't know if we can squeeze it on the bottom of the postcard or say the amended five year plan will appear on the website in the near future or how we're gonna do it. But to say this is this is what we're gonna do now. Well, what, I was on this just, year. Does that mean just I've say disappeared the, off the, the five? If the five-year plan will be amended, don't put a time frame in there. Yeah. And available on the town website as soon as possible. Yeah. Okay. How long does it take to amend this five-year plan? Well, Paul and I need to get together, and we sat down, and we both have got our ideas, and we hash stuff out, and it usually takes a couple of sessions. Right. So we're three. talking like maybe a month or something, like. Yeah. So people are, if we get this we with, within a couple of weeks, it would be on coming, going into budget season anyway. Anyway, so yes, yeah. pre-planning. So, yeah. yeah. But I just think every year we hear at town meeting, I'm looking at the five-year plan, and I was on for two years ago, and you still haven't gotten to me. Blah blah blah. I just think part of this needs to be saying, are we just going to push everything back? Not, you know. Yeah. Don't you agree? Right. I think, no, we, we need to say we're redoing And we did five, that so people had plan. an idea. Because some of these we're roads that were damaged roads. were roads that would have been in the five-year plan <laughs> down the road. Um, but now, now they're right. 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 Oh, right. 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 And change your priorities. Yeah. 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 Uh, so they got they got booted they got, up on they, the five-year plan yeah. because they were damaged. So yeah. I get it. So can I just, uh, due to a longer than average winter, blah, 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 I'm going to take off that clause, which will be pushed back I the circumstances. I totally need to take that off. Yeah, it just doesn't even make much, sense right. dramatically. I mean, and then say, all right, future delays will be working. I Paul take wants diligently. diligently. He wants diligently. Yeah. I'm not an adverb fan, but... You know, I don't like barring future delays because, of course, that's going to be yeah, what happens. I think it's just a five-year plan. Period. We will be working on the following okay. roads. I agree. That's what I. Yeah, think. I think so too. All right. So we will take so out. Which say, will be pushed back? Well, we'll take up. Sorry. Well, let's see. What Paul was saying there. I mean, you can word it differently, but what he was talking about. We're working on these roads, but it doesn't mean that we're going to get them done before winter sets in, depending on what we end up having to do. We could even just say our next scheduled roads are. Or we could say we will be working on the following uh, 
and and hope. How about we hope to work on the following? No, no. How about no? Oh, 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 why don't or, we hope? We will be working. <laughs> we wish. <laughs> and hope to have them done before winter, or no? I don't even think we should say that. That's not possible. possible. Fly next month. Um, yeah, winter could be here. Now. Yeah. Oh, winter could be here next week. I think you've so, got it all. Can I, can I, can we say due to a severe winter rather than saying a longer than average winter? Yep. Yeah. yeah. How about that? That's okay. Good. Due to a severe winter. Followed by two dams from the streets yeah. and by immediate and extensive repairs. I wouldn't even say. I, I, I wouldn't say, say severely, severely is, behind schedule. Yeah, I, I would, would just either. say behind schedule on a five year highway plan. How about oh, you taking out all of Paul's ads? So, I what know. about just saying extensive repairs versus immediate? No, uh, that's, no that's fine. Okay. They were immediate. I mean, that yeah, was yeah. the part they had to get to right on this five year yeah. high, highway plan. All right. Um, the following, uh, or, or um, uh, Steve, are those roads in that order? You're going to start with McCullough and Barnett and then go to Boldick and Tangletown and Port. I can't tell you. I don't know. How about this fall we next weekend exactly. working we, on we, the following roads? This fall we are, will be, since by the time this goes out, it will be fall. Yes. yes. So why don't we say this fall we will be working in, with there. Can I, just, can I just ask a question? And I'm, I'm remembering, trying to remember the five-year plan, which obviously I don't have in front of me. I have it. But McCullough and Barnett Hill were on last year, I believe, swinging into this year. Right. And we're still on McCullough. Okay, right. so, and then we should add the sentence, we will be updating the five-year plan. Yeah, but let me, let me just finish this. Okay. So I'm just saying to say you're going to be working on McCullough, Barnett Hill, Bulldog, Tangletown, Portal, and East Hill this fall, that's, that's totally okay. unrealistic, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say I would say Portal and East Hill, at the very least, are pushed off until yeah. next year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Wait so second, summer 2019, <laughs> which was this summer, was McCullough Hill and Barnett Hill Road. July, Bulldock and Tangletown. August, that was mud season mitigation portal in East Hill. September and October was service work on East Hill Center, South Bear Swamp, and North Bear Swamp. So, so I'm sorry, you, you, you did start work on McCullough this year? Yes. The springs, but not we, Barnett. We've had to pull off from that. So really, McCullough and oh, Barnett are next. Bulldog and Tangletown. Just and then Portal, Portal and East Hill. Um, I just think we're creating yeah. potentially unrealistic yeah. expectations. So you're saying, I agree with you. I agree so McCullough and Barnett Hill, and then and Bulldog and Tangletown. Period. Yeah, but I don't. Are you even going to get to that? I know. We're, talk, we're talking like but realistically. Months. I don't think they're going to get McCullough and Barnett Hill done. Yeah. So <laughs> there is well, that's exactly that's 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 I mean, we're doing we're doing we're splitting the crew up now. We're, we're doing some of that road sign stuff. Yeah. Uh, over on French Road, where all three roads come together, we got a bunch of stuff there. We got our signs. You now we're going to be doing our work there. We've got other places that we have to attend to, so we're splitting the crew up. So we've got. Well, I'm just saying. All I'm saying is, I don't know where days. we draw the line, but I would rather say McCullough and Barnett Hill, and leave the others off, and just yeah. don't say anything. Just say, yeah. you know, we will be updating our yeah. our five year yeah. plan. No, yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Is the service work just uh, just this is a question? Does the service work? Is, does that also get pushed back? Or is that something that's just kind of well, ongoing? We're, we're always servicing roads, and this summer we're servicing in for September and October these roads. Well, everything gets pushed around. Everything I does. Mean, yeah, I mean it's. I don't know what. Work. I guess I don't know what service means. Service work versus full service. And there's an season. explanation right in that book. Oh yeah, here we go. So service work is shoulder cutting, ditching, culvert replacement. Okay. It's, so we're saying that that also gets pushed back. Yeah, I mean. Okay. Yeah. So then it would re how about we say this fall we will be working on the following two roads, McCullough and Barnett Hill. Why don't you just forget the following roads? Let's say this fall we'll be working, working on, on McCullough, McCullough, McCullough and Barnett Hill and, in addition, and in, in addition signage. to the regular 
ongoing maintenance service all over town. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's also important to put in that you're installing signage because we've had that has been a big part mm -hmm. of the select yes. board no, conversation. I, yep. Well, say service. Ongoing signage and maintenance all over town, or something, something like that, because they're out there, you're there, and everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Ongoing maintenance, signage, and maintenance. How's that? Yeah. Ongoing signage. Well, I think you should just say you're installing signs, signs and maintenance. Okay. Well, right. I mean, I installing sign somebody else's right. Okay, but you want? I want to get that in, and then we'll just say uh, the five-year, the updated yes. five-year plan, the amended updated five-year plan will be posted on the website at the end of, by the end of September. Oh, I don't know if we're going to get it done by then. Well, it's just the, it's just the plan. It's just the plan. Okay. Is that fair? Or? Well, you said not to put a timeline. On okay. That. Yeah. Check the this check, fall. Check the updated. Check the check the website. There you go. For an updated signage. Yeah. Thing. There you go. I like that. Oh, one. that's <laughs> you really. <laughs> they like exciting. Five times. Well, they no. Here's the thing. They're going to check it right now, and then they're going to call you and say, "But check. you said it was updated." Check the website. No, so I, we, <laughs> I think rather than than spinning our wheels, uh, not necessarily here in this, but Paul and I. Uh, we need to do this thing very realistically right. of what this five-year plan is. Don't and just like break. Phil said, I mean Headache. that's part of our our budget thing that's going to be coming right up anyway. Mm -hmm. So if we get that done and do it to what we really think can happen there, and then post that on the website. All right, but you guys want you want me to send out this postcard, right? Yes, I think so. I mean, I think it's good to be that we're communicating with our town. Yeah. Um, but I will say that you may get lots of phone calls because people, what they don't, what they're not thinking about doesn't make them make phone calls. It's when they get this information that they say, oh, so as long as yeah. you're okay right. and that Paul may be getting phone calls, hey. you know, to say, well, when is my road going to be done? I'm getting, I'm getting them. People are just stopping. I know. When they see me, they stop. Okay. Right. How come you're doing this and you're not doing that? Yeah. That happens a lot and a lot more and more and more. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Can I just read you back? Uh, yes, you? please do. <laughs> Wordsmithing. Dear That's valued nice. Middlesex resident. <laughs> Um, dear taxpayer. Dear taxpayer. Yeah. <laughs> Due to a severe winter dear followed friend. by two devastating spring storms requiring immediate and extensive repairs, the Middlesex Highway Department is behind schedule on its five-year plan. Do you want to put in this is a repair? Five-year highway plan. Oh, yeah, no, I just didn't yeah. answer. This fall, we will be improving McCullough and Barnett Hill roads, installing signage around town, and performing regular maintenance. Please check uh, Middlesex for, uh, for an updated five-year plan. That's fine. Fine. Thank you for your understanding. Do you want, thank you for your understanding. Do you want us to have a, this is unfortunate or you do not want no. to? No. Okay. No. Okay. We all know it's unfortunate. <laughs> Dear And I don't think news. we need to say, please contact us if you have any questions. Be able to get out of your drawer. Please call Steve Martin at his yeah. personal. Yeah. Yeah. Why not put our phone numbers and our yeah. <laughs> email? I would be happy to do that. Would you like me to do that? No. 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 <laughs> all right. Do you guys want to make a motion on that or do you think it needs a motion or? It doesn't, probably, it doesn't need a motion. I don't know. No, so we're not just it. it. Okay, good. Today is yeah, yeah. the third. Okay. Establish, establish a petition oh. policy for special town meeting articles over $250,000. Action possible. No, $250,000. $250, $250, not 250000 You did. Yeah. <laughs> about that. $250 action possible. So this is Barry's. This is Bear, I, whole, I have a bunch of, I have some in here and I have some others. Bear, it's the town of Barry. Yeah, also here. the, uh, I don't think I have Carol Dawes sent me Barry City Councils, which was that if you change, they have an application if for, if you, so the way it works is there, if you, if you're a new organization and you want to apply for, for funding, um, they, they, there's an application that you submit. If you don't, and, it, and if the voters approve it, and you don't change your funding the following year, you can just submit a letter to the select board. Now, I think the other thing you guys might want to consider. Why do we need the policy anyway? Because we because have our policy now is you have policy. to do the petition every year. Yeah. And so last year, a certain organization we just submitted a letter to the select board, and the other organizations heard about it like wildfire. After they had uh, two hundred and fifty or less, the library. No, two hundred and fifty or more. Two hundred and fifty or more. 
one person did it, but one organization. The Kellogg Hubbard Library, I don't think you were around because you were going right. for your own stuff. The yeah. Kellogg Hubbard Library asked the board, can we please, do we, we're not going to ask for any more money. Do you mind if we just give you a letter to the select board? And the select board said yes, because it was the same amount of money. But the other organizations heard about this too and said, wait a minute, what's your policy here? And I, these towns do have a policy that's dr drawn up and we should be consistent about it. Well, in the past, that's the one time I can remember that we've made an exception to our know, policy. But, you know. but, the, but the question is, does it make sense if someone's asking for the same amount of money to make them do a petition? And in the past, we've said yes. Um, I'm not so sure it does. I think the other thing is to put, and I don't know what the magic number is, but to say, the, the, the same amount or no more than a 2% increase or something like that. I mean, I, they can't. I feel strongly about a petition. I'm getting signatures. It's so an automatic, the reason behind an automatic the thing. We've never, well, we ever not given the money to people. If they can't even get 35 or how many people? 72. How 72. many? 75. In the community to support it, I mean, we're going to have just an exploding number of people wanting money from us because it's guaranteed money. But I forget well, why the, we gave the pass to the library. There's a reason that, I mean, we could legally, we didn't, we, it's not like we just decided, oh, these guys don't have to give a signature. There was another rationale behind it. I think their point, and I can't remember exactly, but wasn't the, wasn't their point? We never said no to them in a, in a, in a zillion years. But that's the way everyone is. Look, Mary, no, I, all I'm saying that. is, and and I, I I also don't believe you were here at the meeting, and I can't remember exactly what it was, but whatever it is, it made sense to us at the time, and we agreed to it. So the question is, are we going to allow that in the future, or are we going to, or that kind of thing in the future, some in some way by amending our policy, or are we just going to keep our policy with the same as that everybody has to do a petition every year? And it's over 250. If it's over 250. The other question you might want to consider, just hear me out, is putting an article in the warning next year uh, asking the voters if they would like these funding requests to go on the ballot. Mm. And I'll tell you why. Because a lot of people don't come to town meeting because they feel as though this is a big part of town meeting and that they are shamed into voting for things or not voting. So that would be Australian ballot? Mm -hmm. It would be Australian ballot. You, you put the funding requests on by Australian ballot. Barry City did that, and they still, all these things still pass. Barry City turn, gives out two hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year in funding requests. But it's the number one request I get from people regarding voting at town meeting. If you had those questions on the ballot, I would participate. Right now, I'm just voting for town officers, and they're usually uncontested races, and it doesn't really I matter. I think the argument is so that, that people but that means, town but, that, but there's another reason for people not to come to town meeting. They participate in the vote, but they might not come to town meeting. They won't. But they still are participating. The problem with town meeting is now it's on the tail end of school vacation, so most people aren't coming because they want a couple more days of vacation. But a lot of people just are intimidated. I mean, I think there's, I think we have, and this is something that Susan Clark has tried to get around, but it doesn't, she can't really address it. It's a cultural, it's a cultural problem in this town that people feel as though there are the elites who have extra money to burn and that they will buy anything. And then there are those people who feel pinched who feel like they don't if they come up to town meeting and stand up and say something that they'll be shot down and that they will be embarrassing for them. Yeah, and it happened to true. one of our mm -hmm. listeners and it has happened to other people who have sworn who are very still active in other parts of town government who say they will never go to town meeting again because they stood up and questioned one of the funding articles as yeah. you know and they hate it. So that might be a more equi put in more equanimity. It would be one line item that would be all these different places still. No, we no, 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 pick and choose. Under 250, over 250. Over 250. How many did we have last year? Oh, I got the town report right there. Some of them are pretty sizable. But where does the under 250 come into play? That's, That's something that... Under 250, they wrote a letter. They just write a letter. And oh, we just something we only used nobody to do it about seven you know, or eight years ago. one article, and we say... Yeah, but, and would we still do that? I don't know. You could decide whether or not to do it. We have to ask the voters to... Um, I don't yes. know. That's a good question. The, I would say we would. Would we? 
to change something from considered a town meeting to Australian ballot, I think we have to have a town wide. So, can, can I see one of the? Yeah, um, it could be. Do you want the town? Just our town report. I mean, you know, like a, yeah, I've got another one right there. Or you want? I just want to see like how much of the stuff that we're voting on are these monies, because then it's like, is anyone even going to come to town meeting? No, they're not. I mean, as it is. <clears throat> What do we vote on here? Well, here, I'll have it for you here in a second. I'm trying to find the right. And we vote on our town budget. Yeah, but nobody has many questions. Oh, no, we well, don't. That's well, Australian, too. But you could vote on things like signs for no. Putnam. Or no, it's no, not. It's Australia. not Australian. You're right. No. It's not Australian. You could vote on things like signs for Putnamville. You could vote on a bond for to improve the highway department. Okay, here we go. You ready to hear what the, you ready to hear what they were last year? Yeah. Yes. Five thousand dollars to the Middlesex Conservation Fund. $600 for Central Vermont Economic Development, $4,050 for Central Vermont Home Health and Hospice, $3,000 to support community connections, $1,500 to support girls, boys first mentoring, $29,801 for the Kellett Hubbard Library, $5,500 for the Senior Activity Center. This basically gets rid of center. town meeting. What? This, by doing what you are suggesting, get gets there. rid of town meeting. Okay, let me just let me just finish. I'm almost there. Um, Ten thousand dollars to support the Waterbury Senior Center Meals on Wheels, and Article 17 was the was the uh, all the two fifties, which amounted to four thousand seven hundred and seventy one dollars. So that's what it. What year are you on? Well, she, it's a different year. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you don't, you guys don't have to consider this now, but I, would, I just think that, I mean, the first, the thing I need now as a town clerk is I need a policy that I can give to people because I haven't been able to put that policy out there about whether or not you're going to require petitions or if you're not going to require petitions. But whatever you do, you have to be consistent. Well, the only time we've ever been inconsistent is when we did that Kellogg Covered Library thing. That was that a was big, a, that's a big article. That's $29,000. Sarah, I understand it. And I'm, I'm embarrassed that we did that, and I can't remember why we did it. Our policy has always been that you need to do a petition over, and we've talked about establishing committees. We've talked about all kinds of other things. As somebody who spends a reasonable amount of time every year getting the petitions, I have to tell you, in Middlesex, it is not that unbelievably bad. You go up five or six times to the school at the end of school and you stand there and you'll get your 80 signatures. So it is not, you know, where it is hard is, it's and I get this, long. is when you don't have, no, 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 when you don't have, when you don't have somebody from town representing you, like Mary and I do home health and hospice, economic development, I can't even remember the third one we do, but we stand there and we get the signatures and, the other thing I would say is, you know, you get it, not always, but you get a chance to talk. People say, well, what does that organization do? You guys, are, you know, blah, 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 blah. You have a little back and forth with them, which I think is a, is a nice is a nice thing. But if you're if you're an organization which doesn't have a board member or can't find somebody in Middlesex to do this, it's they hard for them. They shouldn't be getting money from us because they're not serving our, our people. If they can't find they somebody serving, this Mary, they are serving our people. I'm just, listen, I'm just telling you what I hear. Uh -huh. All I'm it's saying is that if you can't find anybody, then they should be going to another town. I just want to know. I have a right here. I just want to see. I'm, there was a reason why we did this. It wasn't yeah. just like, oh, let's just. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Maybe happened. John Julio was sick. I know. If George Longenegger came in, I have the minutes right here. George but we wouldn't make us. We wouldn't say, okay, you guys don't have to do it because we like you. That's not what. No, we no, something no, no, else. No. That's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> that would be wrong. <laughs> right. So that, that's what I'm saying. There's a there's a logical reason. Okay. Well, I have the minutes right here. She's so great. I don't think we're gonna like what we hear. Oh. So, this is why minutes are a wonderful thing. Because we can't keep it all in our little brains. No. Uh, I, I, I'm resting. I'm, I wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, so, speaking on behalf of Kelly Hubbard Library Executive Director Tom McCone, to, uh, I'm sorry, speaking on behalf of the Kelly Hubbard Library Executive Director Tom McCone, George said the library, that's George Longacre, is asking its special article requesting level 
fund article requesting level of funding from last year, 29801 be placed on the March blah, 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 town meeting warning by the select board instead by petition for several reasons. He said valuable staff time is devoted to soliciting over 75 names of Middlesex voters, even though Middlesex has historically funded the library without significant qualms at town meeting, and only two towns served by the library still require petitions. Uh, Peter says the board has discussed this issue numerous times before. The question has always been, if the board agrees to put the, li to put the library on the warning, will that open the floodgates for other organizations? He said if the board chooses this route, it will do so only for the library and the town's conservation fund and not necessarily for everyone else. John, I guess that was Julio. John suggested requiring petitions only if the library is increasing its funding request. The board agreed that ultimately the voters will make the decision at town meeting by deciding the library special article. Liz moved. And oh, jeez. <laughs> Don't do your work a lot, I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah, so it really didn't say much about that, except that the other towns didn't require the... Right, the, the gist of it was that library staff is devoted to this. The, 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 the voters ultimately will be able to get to the, the say of whether or not something goes up or down. So by a petition, it doesn't really do much good, mm -hmm. especially since... So that would we your, don't require the Middlesex Conservation to have a petition either. Would we require them to have a petition? That's if we up were to you to, guys to decide. All I, we we, we, do can, put, we can put special right articles on our at our yeah, choice. We, so oh, and doing. so that's what we were doing at the time. We were putting it... Right. We were making that decision made, as right. a select board. To right. put it on the same... To put it on. That's, okay, that's how we got away with saying this particular group doesn't right. have to get signatures for you to revisit that okay. policy. Because well, you're, we're revisiting the policy in general about signatures. Our policy is to get petitions. I, right? Our policy now is to get petitions. What about a covered library? We violated it once. It's not even violating. We, we chose. It's, it's not violating. That's a strong We didn't word. agree that we were going to do that forever in the no. future. We just did it once. I mean, if, if, if they came to me now, I would say, George, you're welcome to come up to the school with me and we'll get those signatures. Okay, so you, this is because when, at that meeting, I remember you saying afterwards, we need to talk about in the future whether or not we should require petitions because it's a lot of work right. and I'm not sure it does any good. And we're talking this about the, it right now. Exactly. But I agree with Mary that there is a point to having the recognition of the organization, talking to people. It takes it one step away. You're, you're more removed when you're just sticking it on there, even though you know you're going to... It's just one more letter people write, you know? And it's, you know, you don't even have to do a grant application. You write four paragraphs. Or you talk about, talk about petitions. If you don't have petitions. And it's just, you know, $5,000 no, would be considered, for some of those, a big donation. And to write one letter that you have, like, you have in your machine and you can just change the year. I just, I don't get, I don't agree with it. I believe that if people want money because they support these, they can get out and do it. I used to always do a lot of petitions and I started now. And I get people in the fall. So, Sarah, are you asking for us to pick a dollar amount? Or you can pick a dollar amount. I just need to be able to tell people because, because people are, what I've been getting this summer is we heard that Kellogg Hubbard Library didn't have to solicit a, give, uh, petitions because their funding didn't increase. Do we, can we not have to solicit right. them? So that's where we are. This is why this is on the agenda. Right. Well, here's what I would suggest, in, in, because we've got some more stuff to do tonight. Let's all, let's all think about this. And uh, let's put it on the, I mean, we need to do this soon, because I agree people are, people are calling and asking. And certainly, if we're going to stay with the same thing, we need to get a letter off to the Kellogg Hubbard Library. That was a one-time exception, and you know we're back to our policy, whatever it is. Right. Um, well, then what I'm going to tell, if you don't mind, I am going to tell people that just in case, because it's the beginning of school, there's sporting events, people are already getting mm -hmm. their petitions together. Follow. I'm going to put up the petitions on the website so people can download them and just say, just cover your butts, go out and get petitions. Maybe you won't need all the signatures, but let's stick by the policy. Well, I would say the select board at its next meeting will be making a decision on amending the policy or not. Okay. So you can wait until or the you, middle of September. Or Jeez, you that's just way, say, way, way ahead. Here's the petition. <laughs> you need 72 signatures. And then if we change it, we can put something else up. We have all. Well, whatever. I, I find it hard to believe that people are out there running around now getting signatures. Maybe some people are. Oh. I haven't run into anybody. They are? Well, I mean, they do start soon, yeah. I mean, when's the harvest dinner, right? 
I don't know. How'd you like to be? How'd you like to be? <laughs> so the Kellogg Hubbard Library. And he just called me. Is no, I'm excuse me, not the Kellogg Hubbard Library, Home Health and Hospice. Yeah. Because the city of Montpelier cut their request by ten thousand dollars last year. Well, so included in the budget. More. So now, so now they are doing a petition in Montpelier, and it's a lot of signatures in Montpelier. It's a big deal. They're probably asking for a lot of money. Well, they are. Ten thousand. Good. Yeah, the, the ten thousand that was cut plus whatever their you know cost of living is. Yeah, whatever. What Carol Dawes can't figure out is that the special articles amount to an increase of thirty-three cents on the on the on the tax rate in uh, Barry City, but the budget, which is, would amount to a thirty-two cent increase in the tax rate, keeps getting down, voted down. Right. Well, because people like the idea of supporting those charitable organizations, and they don't like paying for the built-in costs. Ah, so, well, you know, here's the he, well, here's here's the problem is, you know, it is unbelievably challenging to raise money from individuals. And the towns in the past have been an easy hit. Like what I would say is, people who want to support the Kellogg Hubbard Library, let them give money to the Kellogg Hubbard Library. Or not. And, uh, you know, to say that the town, I, I just... Anyway. But I, I might have also no problem with us giving money if the voters approve it. I do have a problem making it too easy. Because it is a guaranteed, it's a guaranteed pool of money. And I just disagree that they should be able to come into one meeting or write one letter and get thousands of dollars. I just do. I don't think that's fair. I'm not disagreeing with you, Mary. I mean, they have to show they're doing something in the community, that there's somebody who feels strongly about them. And that does happen at town meeting. People stand up and say, this is how many people were served by our organization. This is what we did for your town. And the voters that's decide because, yes or no. That's because they got the signatures. <laughs> no, I understand. But all I'm saying is the countervailing argument is you put them on there and let the voters decide. And, you know, what you would say is it's too easy and then every organization <laughs> wants more money and we never vote anything down. And But the petition hasn't, hasn't helped that problem, I don't think. I mean, we have more and more people every year asking for more and more money every year, so it isn't like it's... If they could all write a letter and, and with the home health, wouldn't you think they'd jump it up? If all they had to do was write a letter and get it on the ballot? I think, I would I would tell you there would be, they better have somebody there who's ready to explain the big increase at town meeting, otherwise I've, it's not going to get I've supported. I've seen some of them where nobody gets up to talk about it and they still get approved. Not many. I've been to every more town. and more every year. All right, Mary, I'm not going to argue with you. About okay. That. To me, to me, the only reason not to do what Sarah is proposing, which is make it Australian ballot and greatly increase the participation, is I don't think it's going to make any difference. And I think that's 25 percent of our of our town meeting, and that's just a whole other group of people that won't come to town meeting. That's right. And it will be the I, demise of town meeting. I'm very much against it. Okay. I'm so, very much against it, too, because all the people who want that, it's just like they talked about the school budget. Now you can't talk about any elements of it at any <coughs> meeting. You can't talk about the school budget because it's done by Australian ballot. I and know, I think there's the old, but there's the old argument is, you know, you're not getting the participation because people weren't going, boy, they weren't going to the school meeting. I mean, you think they don't come to town meeting. They really weren't going to the school meeting. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I understand the argument on both sides. So, next time is 200. So, the questions are do we continue our current policy or do we amend it in some way? And is $250 still the magic number? I would say, obviously, if we say it's not 250, it's now 500, all those guys who ask for 250 are instantly going to be asking for 500. Right. So, I think there's danger. Yeah. There's danger in that. When's our next meeting? The seventeenth? Yeah. Must okay. be. Must be. Yep. Okay. I won't be here. <coughs> I'm flying to my son's wedding. Oh nice. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Babies, weddings. Wow. Life goes on.
I know. So. Move approval of the August twentieth. You can't minutes. do that because you didn't. Uh, you weren't. At, you weren't there. Oh, I wasn't. Was I? Yes, I'll move were. approval Where of the I? August twentieth minutes. Second. All in favor of the approving the August twentieth minutes, say aye. 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 I abstain. Mary abstains. Any opposed? We've approved the minutes. Here, could you mm -hmm. Follow up on possible town encroachment of private property due to regular maintenance of corner of Culver Hill and French Road. This is all good news and it's all very fast. Wait a minute, that might be the wrong one. That's the wrong one. No, That's the wrong one. Mary, you were there, sorry. Here, oh, this is the one. To sign. The pink house? That's not I. Yeah. <laughs> I <laughs> Very good. Okay. So well, just, I don't know. What he's I don't, just give it to me. I'll just, just pretend it never happened. There we go. The probably, the probably was one I just printed out. Oh, that was one I just printed out regarding fucking Caligraphy. Oh, hilarious. Okay. <laughs> you signed that when it got over. I did. <laughs> so uh, the good news is that um, uh, Paul did. Well, Paul, Steve, do you want to say this? Tell what happened with the the uh, the McManuses. Sure. So Paul went over there to do some layout for the signs over there. On Culver Hill and French Road. Yep. Okay. And uh, there were some people out there anyway, and then he saw uh, Sarah's email. And he stopped and he talked to me and I said, you go right over there and talk to them because one of the things where they were talking about us encroaching on their land, there's some... Um, delineator markers that are on yeah. the edge of their lawn and Paul remembers putting those back in way long time ago so you mean like the yeah, reflectors? Yeah, little reflectors yeah. They're, and they're, they've been there so yeah. I keep thinking we haven't the corner been going corner hill, but that's not past right. that um, so anyway we are doing a little fix up on that road anyway and, and <laughs> on that corner and with some signs and the only thing that I did say to Paul is that because they're, um, what's her brother's name? Pat, um, Steve? Mike? Mike, Mike thank Patterson. you. Mike Patterson. <laughs> I couldn't pull it out. Right. Um, if Mike thinks there's something different in how that road was laid out way back, then he's welcome to... Tell us. Survey that and tell us that. I mean, Power come up with that information. About the road. What is it, 25 from the center? Yes, basically, or three rod road. But I was just saying and giving them the out that there is a possibility that over the years, mm -hmm. way back, that that road came up more and there was a lot sharper corner there and before those markers ever got put in. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case and we're on their land, well, that's a different story. Do they want us to move the markers? No. So, so it's resolved itself? Pardon? Has it resolved itself then? I, yes, I believe it has resolved itself. Um, Paul went over everything mm -hmm. with them, what we were doing, and they seem to be happy with that. So. Okay. Yay. Great. Nice job. So were we anywhere on the Culver Hill French Road? That's a different situation, right? That's what he's talking that's about right now. About. No, that's the same thing. That's, that's a, what is the, the same thing. Yeah, I'm cats. sorry. That's now gray. That's the <laughs> Okay, yeah, I know. That's our last thing. Yeah, it's yeah. just Steve Hattie Patterson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that we should be good there. Affirmation of request to. This doesn't, you know, doesn't make a cater permit for what does an affirmation mean? So oh, I, I did. I mean ratification. I used the wrong word. I'm sorry. This that they. This is the uh, Zen Barn needed a mm -hmm. permit. They need to get their permit into the Department of Liquor Control at least five days before an event. There wasn't a select. Again, this came in after the last select board meeting, before the select board meeting, and they wouldn't have made it. So I approved it because you said I could once upon a time approve these catering permits for this bread mm -hmm. festival, and I just want to get it into the minutes that you ratify it. Yeah. So motion. Who moved? I did. Still moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We've approved it. Do we you routinely approve things like that? Only if it's a situation like this, and then I usually bring them to the board. Mm -hmm. You said, by, by, I'm sorry, one point during the select board of prior meeting, we said it was okay. They're just catering permits, like usually for things like weddings or something like that. And usually everyone forgets <coughs> about them until the last minute. <coughs> 
I wonder if this is going to be as busy as the S'mores Fest. I think it's going to be huge. It's getting national coverage. Yeah, it is. Right. What is it they're trying to do? Do a record? Make the biggest piece of bread? So I do no. think at some point we want to talk at, on a, as the board about just the whole safety and parking because the last event that we had Wasn't the was... Wasn't the in the winter, though? Yeah. It was, but there was traffic on both sides of the road all the way up to the park and ride. Yeah. Um, I think there was... I'm not sure if there was a sheriff there. I can't remember. Do you I remember what, seeing I don't know one? what authority the board would have over this. I, I don't know. I just know that it's a town function and I think we just need to... Know what to, responsibilities we may have well, with these giant events. Function. No, but I'm saying it's in town. the town. Yeah. And so just we, what is our we responsibility? We don't give them a permit to do that because it's just their own land. Right? This is the beginning and the end of your of your permit type of floor. Right. right. I don't know. I just think we need to be mindful of the fact that a lot of people are coming into the town. There's a lot of traffic. There's. I agree. There's mm -hmm. people walking. There's no side. I mean, there's no sidewalks for people to walk on. Um, so if these events, you know, are common mm -hmm. events that are getting lots of people, we are going to need to. Maybe you guys ought to think about some sort of ordinance or permitting. Like if you expect an event of over such and such that you come to the board and discuss safety things. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm yeah. thinking about is yeah. from a safety and a liability yeah. issue. Right. To my right. knowledge, right now you don't have any. Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't. That's There's a great very idea. limited parking there. Like yeah. you said, cars are yeah. then along the side of the road. You know, yeah. we could we could force them to have remote parking and bus people there. We could do all kinds of, all yeah. kinds of things. If you had an ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you need. Who has an ordinance like that, do you think? I don't know, but we can. That's, Barry, that's a probably. job for your select board assistant. Barry, Barry City. There you go. They have all those parades. <laughs> Orders are signed, correspondence. None. None. Yay. Okay. Yay. Discussion of roadside dumping of furnace and mattresses. I am. <laughs> God, I hate looking at that stuff. Me too. How where much was is this? there? I mean, I saw the. Wait, where was this? This is I now can tell the you. corner of Brooken Center. Yeah. So Brooken on Brook Road, Road at Brooken Center, Road there's too. a couch and a chair over stuff. The rain's pouring on them. And right down Brook Road beyond that, somebody dropped off about eight tires and some yeah. wheels. Oh, was and, that the pull off there? Because yeah. I, I yeah. Go they do the same thing on looking. the edge of Culver Hill Road. They do mattresses. I've seen a couch. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's one thing so for I don't Descartes, know. What do we do? Picard to have the couch, but that's on his own land. You know, he has that couch there in front of that. If somebody puts stuff out on their own land, I don't, I, that's a different. Yeah. That's yeah. a different issue. But I mean, like. But who is it? Who, who is, is it on? Uh, who is it on Nitro who keeps putting that's stuff on? Uh, the, I think Steve Sobel and. Uh, I think that's that. Thing. On that corner. Yeah. That's and Steve that's, Sobel. That's yeah. on his land. He owns that house right on the corner. Okay. But the, oh, the so two chairs, and I suspect that I know where they came from. I mean, I guess, what, what do we do? Is there, does the, once again, are, does the board have any enforcement? If you don't know, do we just go and stick our hands in the cushions and come up with a receipt, or, you know? <laughs> I don't know, I'm not sticking my hand. I'm not either. <laughs> is that a select board assistant now? No, I don't think so. <laughs> DNA, DNA analysis. I mean, who is doing this kind of stuff? Uh, I don't know, but it seems People to be getting worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And is it even a local person? We don't know. I mean, we what could happens? put a post I mean, on front did, porch did forum it, that's did like... The, the high, did the guys from the highway department pick it up? No, they don't have it. I don't think they have the ability well, to Well, I would tell you, I have over the years picked up quite a bit of that stuff and taken it to the dump. The dump and meaning like a cellar? Yeah. Well, I'm getting. I mean, I've, been, I've, I've done it, I bet, ten well. times I've picked up stuff and, and taken it over there. And, uh, you know, it's nasty. I mean, yeah. when that stuff sits out there, it's all wet and... Yeah. It's into the riverways and... Well, it's a problem. I don't know what to do about stopping that, but I do think that we should pick it up as soon as possible and take it to the dump. Yeah. I because do. all yeah. it does is attract more. Yeah. Right. Somebody else doing it. But um, I think that those dumping signs don't really work either. Like, you know, just putting a sign that says no illegal dumping. I, I mean. Well, I don't think we I don't think we put it on the road crew. I think we got whether it's Casella or somebody else. We say we've got three loads of stuff you need to pick up. Come and get it and send us the bill. We're going to make them go down the ledge and bring this tote this thing up. No, they're not going to do that. No. Yeah. Where is the, where is the one that's on that you're talking about? 
I, I'm just talking about this one in particular. No, this is sitting right side of the road. No, this, this is, is right, right on the side of the road. <laughs> this is right at this, yeah, center right of the road. It's not down over the bank. Okay. The down over the bank thing, unfortunately, I think is a thing for Green Up Day, unfortunately. Yeah, that's me. Going down well, the I bank. understand. Well, I've gone down the but bank. Yeah, no, I, I'm not I've gone down the bank and picked up some small pieces of furniture, like, you know, bookcases Thank you, Mary. And stuff. <laughs> this is, these, we're getting phone calls from people saying it's unsightly yeah. and it's gross. And, yeah. Oh, okay, so it's just still sitting there. It's still sitting there right yeah. on if you go up through Brook Road or you'll okay. see it tonight. God, I can't believe it. I, oh, no, I didn't drive Brook Road this morning. Good. Well, I would recommend for those, if, if we're aware of any situation, other situations on the roadside that aren't on the property owner's land, I give our select board assistant authority to contact Casella or whoever and have them yeah. pick that stuff up. I and like that idea. Well, yeah. it, might be a, it might be a thing where the Casella won't stop they and won't do that. They won't stop and do it. But you can get some other local hauler, hauler you know, uh, grunts move junk, yeah. you know, yeah. somebody to come pick it up. Should I put it on a French board forum saying the select board is interested in local haulers submitting bids to remove no. junk from no, no, then no, it will no. Make the No, no, The more it, we publicize it, the worse yeah, people, just, the more we're going to turn into a somebody. damn it's, garbage yeah, and get somebody gonna, and have them do gonna it. It's going to encourage people to get rid of all their stuff by leaving it. There. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Okay. I think I got it back. Okay, so I'm, I'm very carefully reading Sarah's note to me, which has special meaning. Which says what? This is our special me. name. A special meeting, and I want to have a discussion, take no actions, about what uh, next steps might be with regard to our fire department and the issues that have been brought to our attention. Is that going to be executive session, or is that going no, to be No, I don't think it needs to be executive session. We're not taking any action. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, you know, I, I think we need to have a plan of how we're going to address it. And I took it upon myself to contact uh, Rob Halpert last Friday, I asked him to call me back, which he did on Monday, and said, Rob, I just want to make sure that I have this correct in my mind, which is what authority do we have over the fire department? Okay? And what he verified to me was, and he has since sent me some more documentation, which I haven't had a chance to review yet, but he's ready. If we're, if we're going to do something, he's ready to give us a legal opinion, which we can put in the minutes or whatever, is that the only authority we have is the authority of the purse. Like, we can withdraw our, uh, withdraw our funding. Well, the other but, thing, we can, don't we own that building? We can evict them from the building. Well, I, I asked him that question, and he wasn't so sure about that. He said, but if you if you withdraw all financial, because I said to him, I said, can we say you are you are no longer authorized to use our building? You are no longer authorized to use our equipment. He said, I'm not. He said, let me let me think about that and get back to you. But he said the way to do it is to, you know, withdraw the money. So, it, you know, if we don't put it in our budget anymore. Um, well, I guess we'd have to accept a petition if one was submitted, but other than that, we have no control over their day-to-day -day activities or how they conduct their business. And that's a state thing, or what it's is statute. this? It's a state statute. statute. So, like, when I was looking online, I was, you know, just seeing what some other towns did, and, like, one of them had the authority, like, in their, they had an ordinance of some sort that said, you know, they they had the right to remove the chief, for example. Yeah. Um, and I'm not. And just for the record, I'm not suggesting we're removing anyone. I just was, you know, what are you? But know, that's when it's set up under the yeah. auspices of the town. This is right. an independent, not for profit. Right. And we're allowing them to use the things that we buy, and we're funding them. But that's the problem. So they. I but are all so? But a volunteer. But these are volunteer fire departments. Don't all volunteer fire departments sort of follow the same? No. no so ours not. happens to be a 501c3. Ours and happens many towns to be a really, really unusual one. Well, it was set up to no, limit the no, it is not that unusual. Okay. He, said, he said to me way more than half mm -hmm. of the volunteer fire departments in small towns. Now, he said in small towns, big towns are different. Right. They have so he qualified by saying, you know, small, small towns, towns yep. are organized exactly the way we are. Okay. So, just so I mean, I guess my, my question is, and this doesn't this is what doesn't make sense. Let's say you found out that your volu your chief was 
embezzling money. money. So could you, we would have no authority over no, you. In fact, this is Garrett Baxter when we asked him back in June about this. He said, Who's a Garrett Baxter? He's, he's a lawyer for, the, for BLCT. That was the League of Cities. Yeah, Department. and he said, unless then until the town votes to establish, establish it as a municipal fire department, then the select board has no statutory authority over okay. the unincorporated or incorporated volunteer. And they incorporated, I have the, doc, the documentation here, the okay. select board asked me to get this, 1964, and then they redid Hey, how'd you find it? Uh, it was a process. But uh, let me ask, can you be a municipal fire department that's volunteer? Yeah. Yes. That's so where we, I was going with this. We could and, establish, we could establish okay. a town of Middlesex fire department. By vote of the electorate. Yes. Right. right. Town yeah. meeting. Yeah. Town meeting. Yeah. And most people, 99% of the people in town don't understand any of this, of including myself who's on the select board. Right. So, um, but then that gives us the authority over, more authority over the fire department, which is what this person yes. had been saying when they talked about the term municipal. Yeah. Okay, so, so like board I was assuming that municipal sort of meant kind of the way that um, Montpelier is in terms of like that you would have to hire, you know, you would have to pay your, but no, you could have a volunteer municipal fire department. Now, what is the disadvantage to having that? Like money. why money? Well, the, the question is, so let's say we were to do that. Mm -hmm. Say, you know, effective, you know, next year's budget year, there will no longer be a budget to support your nonprofit organization, and we're going to be founding a town fire department. Question number one is, anybody who's interested in serving on that fire department, please raise their hand. Mm -hmm. You know, probably we would lose probably we'd lose almost all, if not all, our existing fire department. So then you're starting Then you're starting from scratch. But why? Because what uh, is going to change okay. for them? It's just a... Right now, they are very proud, as we have seen, that they have their organization down there that they run and they're responsible for. And the issue is when we hear, through various means and ways, that they are not, A, responding very well to fire calls in particular, and B, uh, not being very cordial to new members who are interested in joining, that's a problem. We, mm -hmm. can, we cannot, I mean, we can bring them in here and say, guys, you need to do better. But we saw their, we saw their response when they were in here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, in my mind, unfortunately, I, th I think the alternative is, and I, I don't know how we get from here to there, and it's going to be messy, but we need to establish a town fire department and have one or possibly two paid, trained, experienced people on staff who then go out and recruit, train, encourage volunteers so that we have a real fire department. And is that going to be expensive? You bet it is. It's going to be, but it's going to be a lot less expensive than having uh, than having the city. But you'd of Montpelier. still have mutual aid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's the other question, which I was going to try and find the answer out to today, and then I ultimately decided I didn't dare ask anybody the question. If we no longer had a fire department for some period of time, how long will mutual aid continue to respond to our fires? They might say, if you don't have a fire department, there is no mutual aid, and you have no fire protection at all. In which case, we would have to immediately turn around and hire Waterbury or Montpelier or whoever we could get to respond to our fire. I mean, it's a dark and stormy. Well, and then you have this asset here of the building and all of the equipment, but is there a scenario where you would have Montpelier be your fire department and then you would also have like a branch of the Montpelier department here? We never explored that in the past. We explored... Because what would you do with your asset, well, your fire department? Someone would use it. Make a, make a yeah. hell of a town clerk's office. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, the equipment can be sold, okay? That's, that's not an issue. The building, the building obviously, is a, is a bigger issue. But, I, but my recommendation is that we would only do something like that as a stopgap interim measure. And, you know, I, I think it has to come before the voters. They would need to have to understand the, the financial 
you know, the financial responsibility we're taking on, but just to, tr to try and start an all-volunteer fire department over from scratch, to me, is just too daunting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Too daunting. Are you talking about having a full-time firefighter 24-7? Like I'm not saying they would be 24-7, but I'm saying they would be responsible for the operation of the fire department. So, you know, the fire department needs to be available 24-7. I wouldn't expect you could pay anybody any amount to be re re truly right. available 24-7. But that we would have, and I don't know what the magic number is, but I think it has to be more than, more than one and less than five, Firefighters, and you know, trained firefighters don't come cheap. I suspect you're talking, you know, fifty, sixty thousand, maybe more, plus benefits, plus blah blah blah. But uh, I think that's something we have, and, and you know, maybe we need to. Uh, and I want everybody to to just think about this. But you know, maybe we need to hire. A, I mean, there are obviously I don't know who they are, but I'm sure we can find out who they are and get a consultant in here to, to, to talk to us about how we do this. What about Paul Attenti? He seems to have a lot of fire department background. Who? who, who? Paul. Paul. Attenti. He, he does. Emergency. He does, but I don't know whether he's the right, 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 right person. Well, but I just couldn't he's think. been involved down there to a pretty good extent. I mean, he's been teaching at, at uh, VTC. He's been teaching fire safety at VTC. He's well aware of the standards. I don't know if he's... Well, certainly in terms of somebody in town, that's the only person... Yeah. But the other thing, too, is is that I, I would be curious to know when you're looking at towns our size with volunteer fire departments, you know, for example, what are the response rates for other towns? Are our response rates grossly slower than other towns, or are they actually on par with other towns? Because it's the nature of a volunteer fire department to have to, you know, take 40 minutes to get to a fire. Um, and so, like, I don't want to take, I don't want to take one person's, we're talking like the middle of the day when everyone's at work, right? you know, and so that's I don't want to take the one person's is, word for this to say how bad our fire department is. I have no idea because I have no comparison to say that, that our fire department is slow, our fire department uh, makes poor decisions. I, I don't. I mean, I, it's, a lot of it's just hearsay. It's like, yeah, I know that there were some screw-ups. I know they exist. Um, was that well, ineptitude or was that could have happened to any volunteer fire department? I don't know. I think the answer is it happens to many volunteer fire departments. So what we're, what we're having going on here is, is happening in a lot of other places. Right. It's harder and harder to get volunteers. Yeah. And I think what, what makes the difference as in almost any volunteer-driven organization, is leadership. Mm -hmm. if, you have, if you have good leadership, good leadership attracts good people, and you get a good, vibrant organization with a reasonable number of members and a reasonable uh, response rate and reasonable service. We are we are cursed by a couple of things in Middlesex, the biggest one being the interstate that, you know, so many of our calls, huge percentage of our calls are up on the interstate and aren't even our right. town residents, yeah. mm -hmm. which to me is, you know, it's interesting. You're on the New York Thruway. There's a response to an incident on the New York Thruway. It's the New York Thruway police, the New York Thruway uh, fire department, you know, whatever. The, the state has put a hidden tax on us and on all other towns where the interstates go because they're, we're required to respond to these interstate calls. But that's, that's a down-the-road thing. I mean, yeah. the reason I like the idea, or at least the thought, of having a consultant is have somebody come in. We're, we're in my view, we're not going to get anywhere having those guys come in here and talk to us. I just could feel it in my bones when they were here the last but time. But we they, can't be afraid to be taking action because we're afraid they're all going to quit and then we're going to have no one to no, our fire department. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying, I'm saying the idea of having, whether it's, whether it's Paul or someone else, come in and go down there and meet with them, look at their call records, look at, look at their incident reports, talk to them about how they build membership, and come back to us and say, you know, I think a few small changes could make a big difference, or I think you're in a hopeless situation, or, you know, whatever it is. I like but that. I think 
Well, these consultants are also designed to help the the um, volunteer fire departments come up with ways to do recruitment. So this isn't all about what are you doing wrong. It's like how are we doing? Oh no, how you have to paint improvements? it. It's important to paint it. We're trying to help you. Right, because that's what we're trying to do. We're not trying but to oust anyone. When we when we had them in here and said those kinds of things to them, we saw what the response was. All I, all I'm saying is. And I'm incredibly frustrated by this whole thing because I just feel like it's a problem that, that isn't going away. I'm ready to, this is where I'm a big spender. I'm, I'm ready to spend some money to have somebody come in here and, and take a look at this and come back to us and, and make some recommendations. I, um, I would look for a grant for this because I think it Them being it could a exist. private organization, do they have to let somebody in to review well, their records? Well, they, they, we, it's our building. Yeah, but you're not. Their records aren't yours. Well, if they, if, if they, dispatch well, the public the, the are records there. are public records. Yeah, the dispatch we, we, we can look at the but, public but records. But they're not public, are they? They're sure, they are. Five uh, nonprofit. Their incident reports get get submitted yeah. to the city. Yeah, but, oh yeah, that has to. Be. I don't know the I answer to. Maybe that. other stuff that they wouldn't have to share. Sure, but, but get it other the incident ways. Reports. Yeah, but I think whether they'll let somebody in and. I, I mean, what well, we care if about is... If they don't, then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I have to back yeah. up Dorinda and Steve. I, from what I've seen, there's just really nothing that they're going to right. agree to. Really? Yeah, no. Yeah. No, right. they, they really operate in as a very independent group mm -hmm. right. in, the, in a publicly owned building. But how do you, how do you know scenario. that there's a fire? Someone calls 911. Yeah. Right? This so there's the incident ash. report from the dispatch that right. we at least know, and there must be some there indication are. of when the fire department arrives. You can yeah, get rich. that all from Capital Central. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And they would show when Middlesex arrives. Yeah, so they, those they are. have to call in yeah. so and so on. Right. And when it's come to whatever. insurance matters, and remember, we do provide insurance coverage right. for them with that. Well, that's huge. And the debt service for all their vehicles. Debt yeah, service and insurance, but they, right. you know, I've had to go down insurance. There have been. I've had to go to that building and get reports, but I, other than but that's only in an insurance case, and they have but to. All, all I'm saying is, if they truly take that position and they don't want to, and they expect us to continue paying for all our stuff, that's where we go to the voters and say, "Hey, voters," and run the risk of losing the chief and the people who know how to do it, or at yeah. least a few of them. I don't know that there's well, everyone. There aren't many to lose. Right. They don't even, most of them don't live in Middlesex. Right. There's only one, I think, uh, DuPont, who lives in Middlesex. Well, no, um, no. Jeff Coons lives Jeff Coons lives in Middlesex. Who else? Eric Matavia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I and I really do. There's I, only seven, you know, I think, in total. The best scenario would be if we could find a way to convince them to work with us mm -hmm. and do what they're supposed to do, but they haven't proven they're going to do that at all. I think, Steve, you're absolutely right, but yeah. that's the problem. Yeah. They, yeah, they, no. they, they, I don't think Peter asked them to do very much. No. I and, and they wouldn't even do that? But then here's the question. How many people are sitting out there on their couches right now going, if only I could join the fire department, or I would I would if it were a different fire department? We don't know. No, no, we don't know that. Yeah, we don't know that, but, but I, I know tell volunteers you there are, are really hard to find for the, volunteer fire department. There, it's very hard. There to are find. some out there, though. I and think there are. Another problem there are too. you might be up against is Marge and Bob Bauer are EMTs. And I know they are out constantly. The fast squad. The yeah, fast they squad. are. And they you are. may lose that as lose a them. result because they are a very important part. Right. Of They're an asset. They're, They're an asset. asset. They huge asset. asset yeah, to this they definitely town. are. And do they live in Middlesex? They don't. No, they just work but, but they are amazing. And also, Marge is the treasurer. And Marge is the treasurer. So. And um, well, I think I think uh, I think that what we do is go back and and say, okay, this message wasn't very well received the last time we presented it, but now this is a firmer, sterner message. We want to help make improvements there, and we're ready to do it with your assistance and cooperation, or without it. And you guys need to think about that and get back to us. I don't, I don't know. I don't know yeah. what else to say to them. Yeah. I mean, Marge and Bob Bauer might be happy they to might. stay around and 
if we were to change things somewhat. Is that something you want me to put on for the next meeting? Do you want me to bring the fire? And well, all I want, <laughs> all I wanted to do tonight like was have a discussion. I feel like one of us to go to one of their meetings and ask if we can go to one of their meetings. They don't have that many, do they? Have them on the, the second Tuesday of the month? Let's send Phil. Just kidding. <laughs> Phil's going to be at the... I'd go, but I'll be at the... Uh, I know, that's why I was yeah, kidding, because yeah. you're at the, the, the telecommunications. And also, one last thing before we do this, was we get into budget season. Last year, you said you really don't want to have bring in all the people to come and make their pitches, like the fire department, the conservation commission, the, the, well, the highway department. Do you want to do that this year? Do you want me to uh, schedule the fire department to come in and, and make its budget pitch? And Do you want to combine the two things with the budget pitch and this conversation? Last year you said that there were the, but you weren't getting well, that much I, out of the budget. Pitches, I know. So. I, I definitely, I definitely want to have the fire department come in in the budget process, okay. even if it, even if it's sort of a joke. I think that's because that's that's the only element of control we have. In terms of some having the conservation commission come in. I'm happy to have them submit something to us in writing. I think we can go down the list and decide yeah, yeah. who we want to meet with. The highway department, I guess we don't need to meet with them. They don't spend very much money. So we'll, just, <laughs> we'll just accept a written proposal from them. I, I, no, I, I, I am just very motivated to make some decisions and move forward on this process. And it's so easy when we're so busy to, you know, just Let's just keep fly. on going along. and, and uh, it isn't working. It isn't working. Um, right. I so mean, I'm, I'm happy always, to say yeah, let's, we're always let's, putting it off. Let's let's think about this until the next meeting and then make some decisions. But um, you know, I guess I guess what I would ask you to do, Madam Select Board Assistant, is is see maybe have a conversation with Paul and say, would you be the right person? Would you be willing to take on some kind of a role in this process? Or is there someone else we should I'm be talking to? I'm a little to? concerned that they have troubles with him, too. Like, that they see him as someone pushing in. What do you mean? They, have, term, they have trouble with their anybody. Anybody. You know, Oh, okay. I just have this feeling. Maybe not. It's a tough It's a tough one. I've, I've worked for years as a consultant. You know, you go into, you get called in as a consultant because somebody perceives a problem. And then, you know, I mean, people know why you're there. I don't so. think he's the right person as our emergency management person. I don't think he's the right person to be the consultant. I think you hire a complete um, independent, independent outsider. outsider. But he you may know. have contacts. Yeah. There was, a, Stowe just did one in 2016. Yeah. And they hired a company out of New Hampshire to do the assessment. And Where it was a huge, just, all this I just looked it up online. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. Expensive. It's very. I bet it was thirty. I bet it was thirty grand. But I'm. I'm wondering if there are funds available too to apply through. You know, uh, for no these funds kinds for of anything. Really, through the um, Fire Safety Institute. Yeah, something yeah, like that. I'll, I'll call them and see if by any chance. I mean, I'm just there, wondering if the state fire marshal's office or somebody like that, you know, might be able to. There's got to be something. This has yeah. got to be a common problem. In it is a common world. problem. And you know, the bottom line is. Middlesex right now is in a transition from a sleepy small town yeah. to a bigger to a bigger entity. I don't know exactly what that is, but the fire department is just emblematic of that. It's just yeah. it's like the roads. People now moving here, they expect different types of roads. Mm -hmm. They expect a high functioning fire department. They expect, they expect this, internet. They expect <laughs> internet. Oh, yeah, my exactly. God. I mean, it's well, in a transition. But uh, this is this is a little different to the extent that we don't have control. I mean, that's <laughs> part of part of this really is a structural problem. Mm. I mean, if 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 we could, and and you know, this is where I get back to the paid thing to to hire someone who I mean, I don't have expertise in, in anything about fire departments. Um, yeah, I know how to work on trucks, but I don't know how to fight fires, and I don't know. I don't know how you recruit people to be on volunteer fire departments, but the, vi the, the fire departments who are successful are fire departments who have good leadership, who are positive about accepting new members, who are welcoming to new members, who see to the proper training of, of right. new members and all, that, and all that stuff. And, you know, I hate to throw stones at these guys. These guys have put in tons of time tons of time volunteering for the fire department but it isn't what they're doing is not working in my view yeah and i agree yeah and i i since i found out that it was a 501c3 i just it's it just gnawing at me that says you know we, we 
put a lot of money in our budget for this department. Yeah, and they and always say it's only 35000 and it's like, no, there's the debt. Yeah, like exactly. exactly. That's why I yeah. want to put all oh, those, those things trucks. together, because yeah. we're, we're and the spending insurance about 250000 on that. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, there's the Division of Public Safety, Division of Fire Safety. I'll call them and see if there's sure. anyone that they can possibly direct me to. That'd be great. Maybe if you call the Stowe and find out about their pro thing, too. I'm just saying. I know. I know. Just I'm sure they're so expensive. expensive. Well, and the thing with Stowe, too, is that they have all these tourists, right? right, right. And that and the cost of they have the EMT, and they've got heart attacks sure. for old people and all kinds right. of things. So they are... Yeah, and it's a volunteer. I yeah. wasn't saying. Yeah. I was just saying. Was a volunteer department. Yes. Yeah. I'm just saying, you know, to get some, you know, they interview five people, and this guy was great, and maybe this one's cheaper, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But well, whatever. I, I just want to start down some path where we're right. taking action. I mean, we not sitting on our just hands. be able to call our five towns in this district and just say, you know, or you know, Worcester, Callis, and Marshfield, or something, some similar sized towns, and just say. You know, what, can we look at your response rate? And I mean, and, and this is the thing. It's like, I don't know that it isn't what just, this person it is. Isn't just, it isn't just response rate. I know it's rate, not just though. response rate. It's a lot rate. more than so that. I know. I think we can find out the response rate through uh, Capital West. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's really, it's really ultimately comes down to me that it's a leadership problem. Well, Liz yes. is right. Look at this. We could, there's a grant, assistance to firefighters grants for Montana. Um, the, uh, volunteer fire departments, enhance the fire department safety, organization ability, blah, 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 fire perfection, blah, blah, blah. There you know, are. Grants, all the grants are closed, the periods are closed, but um, there are grants available. They're just closed right now. Yeah. Hmm. So there you go. Well, the, does this make sense to everybody? I mean, it's, it's yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I just think. No, we definitely need to stay on this. Because we've been on approach and avoidance for a while, mm -hmm. for years. Right. I think the consultant idea makes sense. It, you know, it'll just give us a lot of information in terms of then finding a you know, and maybe and maybe the right way to getting getting back to your ideal is maybe the right way to sell us is to say, listen, we want to have a joint meeting between your board and our select board, a specially warned joint meeting where that's the only. Subject and they aren't going to like it. I know they're not going to like it. But who do we think is on their board? Do we have any? Well, I think we just mean yeah, the fire department meeting. The fire department it's meeting, we mean. Yeah. I think isn't isn't Jeff president? Yeah. Well, Jeff. Jeff's president. Doug's, Doug's the chief. Doug's chief. chief. Yeah. Doug's Marge chief. is the treasurer. Yeah. That's pretty much about it. Yeah. I mean. And you said uh, that uh, my neighbor isn't on there anymore. Who? Which one? And, uh, and Bruce, Bruce, Bruce Jackson. No, Bruce, no, he hasn't been on for a while. Long, as long as I've been here. I mean, what's con what really concerns me more than anything else is when here's our road foreman who is in town all that time, and they gave him the they gave him the pushback. They gave Bruce Jackson the pushback, and. You know, Bruce is getting a little longer in the tooth, like we all are, and part of it may have been, but. But he always did their budget stuff. Well, and, and guess what? He's in town most of the time. Yeah. It just, it just. Sorry. Anyway. So Sarah, if, if you do a little poking around, and, and for everybody else, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some poking around on the internet, and uh, you know, if anybody else has any ideas about anybody to to talk to, to contact. Yeah. I mean, Paul, I mean, I, I think what we could say to Paul is, you know, we, we, it's important to have an outsider do this, and we're hoping maybe you have some suggestions of people. Maybe you would. I mean, we yeah. could approach him that way. He yeah. also has some insight on the department, I think, right. that he right. might be able yeah. to right. share that. No. I don't know. Dorothy but they the haven't been, uh, you know, again, they, they've Frank. been anything but welcoming to him. Dorothy Allen? Dorothy yeah, Benton Frank. Oh, no. no. I don't know who that is. Okay. I've, I've said my bit. I'm sorry for okay. keeping you all. No, it's, you know, um, I think it's important. Do you guys want to have a motion to adjourn the meeting? We never I'm going to adjourn the meeting. You know, I just, read, I, said, I just read uh, Robert's Rules of Order that actually there's supposed to be a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'm just you saying. Know, it's a type of light reading I do. <laughs>
<laughs> so, uh, we've been right told over and over person. again. I've been told over and over again. It's funny, I was going to say, boy, is she a fun person. <laughs> You're a fun Get this yeah, democracy really. person out of here. Is there a motion to adjourn? I already did. I already did. Is there a second? Second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We have a turn. Thank you.